Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the show here today. This is uh, probably a, one of our last shows of this year, I think. It might well, it probably is the last Night Owls, I think, uh, Thundera, don't you think? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, yeah. We're coming into a new year, a new, bright, wonderful year that everything's going to be awesome. I shouldn't say that. We said that last year. No, oh, don't say that. Fault. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going with uh, this will be 2021 is going to make us wish for 2020. That's how bad it's going to be. It's going to be apocalyptically bad for most of the world, uh, if uh, not all of it. It's just going to be terrible. There's going to be cats and dogs living together, helter-skelter everywhere. Mm-hmm. Absolute anarchy and chaos is what's going to happen. Because if I say anything positive, I unleashed hell. <laughs> so right. well, I'm just going to go full negative and hopefully I unleash heaven. That's the goal. <laughs> That's the goal. Well, I don't know how well the reverse psychologies work on the uh, the big dude upstairs, though. Might yeah, he's take pretty offense. smart, isn't he? Yeah, yeah he he's is. He's kind of clever, a little bit clever. Uh, but uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna give it a shot. Uh, but uh, anyway, happy to have you guys here. Of course, you know we're gonna be talking about all uh, kind of current news and things going on, and we do have a topic today. What is that topic, Thundero? That topic is. The holiest of holies, oh my God. known as the Bible. Oh, oh, we're we're getting it. We're getting into the big boy, the big boy. We're going for uh, it, yeah. Uh, just so you guys know, this is uh, going to be uh, uh, the beginning of our 112 part series on the Bible. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, you know, uh, I, I'm joking offhand, but uh, I, I, use, I chose that number very, uh, very, very specifically. I did, uh, yeah. Jester. I just want you to know that you're an English teacher and you spelled owls wrong. I, I just did on purpose, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I get, I get those four letter words are tough, but <laughs> I was in a hurry, maybe. I don't know. That's all right. I'm sitting here sharing it out. I'll fix it in a second. Hold on. We fix it in post. It's fine. Our <laughs> Live exclamation exclamation! Hi, all right, here we go. Uh, so I have gone and I've shared this out and posted it so people will know. I hope you're doing the same. That's your responsibility. Uh, so let me get this done here. Uh, hold on. I gotta go on and do all that. Damn it! All right, I, I I said welcome. All right, let me fix it. Jesus. Uh, well, anyway, how was your week and your Christmas and all that kind of stuff? Uh. Personally, it was it was really rough, but for the most part, it was okay for everybody else around me. So that's all I can ask for. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, I'm looking for my. Oh, do I want to spend time on that? Should I bother with that? Oh goodness gracious! No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to come back over and watch it live. There we go. All right. Uh, so let me bring. Uh, uh, you didn't do um, uh, any special dinner or something. I know you're not a big fan of the the Christmas, but we I mean, went over to. To her, my mo- my mother in law's house, and all the all of my um, brother in law's kids, so my nieces and nephews, we did all that, and then we did you know food and whatnot. But it, the the reality is, by and large, almost all of my family's dead, oh, yeah. and my wife's family for some reason has all decided they no longer get along and won't. You know, like the extended family. So it's it's just not really a big deal like it was. Is it a a TDS problem? Uh, I don't think so. I think they're just all uh, pricks. Oh, I see. Well, yeah, that's all right. That's all right. That's the way it is. Uh, Yeah, my my family's pretty much kind of out of the uh, 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 off off the planes and into the basket. I guess you could call it. Uh, But Mm. um, uh, except for my dad, you know, the funny thing is, my father. Um, I still got brother and sister, I guess, somewhere. Uh, but um, uh, my father is very interesting. The dude went to war. He went to Vietnam four times. Four times. Oof. Right? Uh, he was shot, blown up. He still got metal in him that occasionally works itself to the surface and the doctor will pluck it, pluck it out. He was set Oof. on fire, burned. Uh, then he spent another, what, 12 years in the field working for the Pentagon? doing the various stuff that they do. I guess, I don't know, Delta Force, whatever they call it. Uh, but um, and, and then, of course, he became like a teacher or, or I guess or something like that. Uh, but um, 
This guy has been beat up, shot on, burned on, all kind of damage, fallen from very high height. I know he cracked a bunch of ribs because he, f- he he fell like freaking 60 feet. Um, and he's the one that's still alive? How's that? <laughs> he's tough. He's tough bastard, dude. Oh, look he who just, we got in here. We got a I beautiful boy. Hey, John. Speaking of, speaking of tough bastards, we got John Dillard. Speaking of tough bastards, you got the weakest nice guy around. <laughs> the weakest nice guy around. Aw. See, uh, John knows you don't you don't brag about yourself being tough. No, it's not how tough guys do it. No, that's right. You brag about other people. Uh, but Don, congratulations! I haven't been able to say it to you directly, dude. Uh, nice to see another bald one has been brought into the world. It's perfect. You came out with a full head of hair. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you you got a hairy one, did you? Oh, that's good. That's good. So what do we get this time, boy or girl? Oh, lumpy, too. Ah, it was a girl. So you got now, how many girls you got now? Two girls. Two? Well, <laughs> you keep trying, sir. It'll hit eventually. <laughs> uh, that's the reason I exist, because my father wanted a son. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Any time in my life, am I going to have someone help me with the yard? No, right? <laughs> right? That's right. That's right. You got to think about these things. Don't That's you? pretty sexist of you. Then women can get out there and do the yard work too. Gosh, they can't. Break the cinema. You know, my <laughs> neighbor, <laughs> getting my work neighbor's there. wife goes out there and does the lawn and stuff. I'm like, oh god, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, uh, John, what'd you name her? Uh, her name is Ella Victoria. Ooh, Ooh. That's I do a nice like name. Victoria. Yeah, Victoria. So needs to make we're kind of in a little bit of a conundrum now because the first one's name was. Emma Valentina, Ooh. and now this one's Ella Victoria. Victoria and Valentina are both hot sauces. They are, <laughs> <laughs> and and it's your wife has got a plan. It sounds like it yeah. does, right? Yeah. Like, I, as the if I do have a boy, am I going to have to give his middle name like Frank's Red Hot or something? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Or just stick with the EV uh, thing. That's cool. Uh, but uh, no, I really, dude. Uh, congratulations. I love kids. Uh, uh, that's a, it's a wonderful it's thing, dude. Wonderful thing. Yeah. It's, it's really nice. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a Christmas present too. Mm-hmm. It's a Christmas mm-hmm. miracle. It is. So how is the wife doing? Is she, uh, healing up and recovering? Uh, yeah, it was a little touch and go there for a while. Cause, uh, she got, she got tore pretty wide open. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah she has some, uh, some second degree lacerations going on and, but uh, and some preeclampsia afterwards. Ooh. But uh, her blood pressure is back down. It's it's reading normal for the past uh, day and a half. So it looks like we're out of the woods. Well, that's good, dude. I, I you know my mom had a, had very similar problems, uh, mu- uh, much worse actually. Uh, but uh, it was kind of funny when my my wife had her babies, uh, or our babies, I guess you should say. I should claim them. Uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> well, I, <laughs> Chris, I was I was in the uh, I was in the op- uh, the operator delivery room, I guess, and um, uh, we went to uh, a, a pretty good hospital, I guess. Uh, they said it was anyway, um, and I saw the the do- the doctor, and she was <clears throat> it was very odd sensation uh, for for me, John. Uh, this woman was massaging my wife's uh, uh, vagina walls, and uh, she massaged uh-huh. it the whole time. But you know what? She didn't tear at all. Not even a little. Really? It worked. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She tore on the second push, and then uh, <laughs> yeah, and then come around the come around the, the sixth push when the baby uh was, oh. was you know, already crowned. She had, they had timed it a little bit wrong, so uh. during the third push, you know, during the third push, the baby's head popped out, which was no good because now you got to wait for the next contraction, you know. But they couldn't, so they had to tell you know keep on pushing, keep on pushing, and, and it was diminishing returns every time she pushed. It was weaker than the last, so they had to kind of sure. go in there and they had to go in there and turn the baby a little bit to get it out because the shoulder got stuck, and then she got she really got tore up. She getting any uh, epidurals? They like those. Yeah, she did. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, she did. Yeah, I, uh, I know now why wow. because I don't I don't like listening to people crying and stuff. So yeah, that's fair. It's not that's fun. Fair. Yeah. I I now know why my I was my mother's favorite because I was a C section. Uh, it ah, sounds there you just go. miserable. That's, there you go. Yeah. That sounds horrible. Yeah, well, they. And I really the issue. Yeah. We we were all set up for the epidural, right? We would, we had went in. She was only maybe four centimeters dilated, and as soon as we got there, uh, the anesthesiologist was waiting for us. And then 
as soon as we got there, an ambulance comes in with some lady who needs an emergency cesarean. So they pull him off to go work on her. But by the time he comes back, she's already eight and a half centimeters dilated, ready to push. Oof. And, yeah. uh, you know, she's sweating and throwing a big old fit. And, <laughs> you know, once you do that, once you're in that, that later stage, uh, the, the contractions are coming so close together that it's hard to get a needle into your spine safely. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. That is fair enough. You, you know, it's a, uh, uh, we had a kind of interesting experience. The first one went really well. And the second one was like, uh, yeah, they had to, they had to induce her because, uh, my, my daughter had been diagnosed with leukemia. And of course we'd been in the hospital every day doing all that you know, nonsense is involved with that. So my wife was, you know, touch us upset. Uh, so she was, she was supposed to have the baby, but she, she wasn't. So they were like, oh, okay, we have to induce her and get the baby out. Uh, so they did, uh, two hours, two hours that, oh, that baby came out of her, man. Um, and, uh, the thing was, is I, we were at a different hospital, which wasn't as good, I think. And, uh, I, my wife says, uh, I think it's coming. So I kind of, you know, I took a peek, you know, and I saw a little head pushing. I was like, oh, yeah, well, I guess it is coming. So I went over, I, I went outside and uh, I told the ladies at the desk, you know, I said, uh, yeah, I, I think the baby's coming. And they're like, okay, sir, we'll, we'll take a look at it a bit, right. sir. Can, can you? <laughs> okay, It's really sir. hard to, to fathom the attitude these women have. Oh, my God. <laughs> It is freaking ridiculous. So they sent me, they shooed me away. So I'm like, all right, I went back in. And my wife says, you know, it's really, I think it's coming. Well, look down, I could clearly see the head now. I was like, oh, I'll go tell him again, baby. Uh, and I went out and I said, yeah, you know, um, uh, I really think it's coming. And they're like, oh, all right, sir, we'll take a look. And they came in and then they're in panic mode because the baby's mm -hmm. fucking coming, you dumb bitches. <laughs> And, you know, it's not like I ran out there like, oh, my God, oh, my God. That's not my character at all. I was like, uh, yeah, I think it's coming. You know, just like that. It's not like yeah, I had I can, I, can, I, can, I can understand the uh, hesitation and all that stuff when you're dealing with somebody who has a history of, of coming in there and being stupid. You yeah. Know, especially for first-time parents where they're like, oh, I don't know. What do you, can you take another look, you know? But I can't, it's, it's ain't our first rodeo. Come on. Right. Exactly. Uh, but they, they do. Those... Uh, I don't know what it is, but the maternity wards in hospitals are full of some very, very arrogant people. I, I, I don't, it's shocking. You would think that would be the opposite of that. You would think they would be these nice, kind, grandmotherly types, right? I think even if you work in the maternity ward, they still call you like a midwife, right? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't care. I'll call. I'll call. <laughs> I'll call I just wish. I just wish Booster was here for this conversation because he would love he would have loved it. That's true. I don't know what he's sleeping. Whatever. We do need to move on to the news, though, John. Uh, but uh, I am very, very happy for you, dude. Really am. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Let me come over here and share this, and let's get into this uh, <sighs> news. <laughs> I am going to start out with happy news, though. I am doing it. You can't stop me. Happy, 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 happy. All right, here we go. It's happy news. That is. That All is. right. So what do we got here? Go ahead, Thundero. New Godzilla versus Kong. I don't like that they just call him Kong, but whatever. Synopsis promises all-out war. I like it. Yeah. Now, I, you know, I put this up here because, you know, everyone's looking forward to it. We had the first movie, which was a pretty good movie. The second was great monster fighting. It was good. It was good. You know, just forget the, the human stuff. Although I did watch it a second time recently. Um, mm -hmm. And it was more bearable the second time. So, but yeah. uh, but the monster stuff is killer. Uh, but I, you know, this, this, I have a problem. Uh, I have a problem. I don't. I'm not interested in Godzilla versus Kong any more than I am Superman versus Batman. Yeah, it's a problem for me. Uh, and this article is basically saying that we're, you know, because the initial idea or thinking was uh, that we're going to get, uh, they're going to have some, you know, two alphas meeting each other. There's going to be some fighting, and then there's going to be some big bad uh, that uh, that they're going to have to deal with. But it sounds more like. One of them, probably Kong, is being controlled, uh, and uh, the the whole thing is just a knockdown dragout. Uh, which you know, the fights will probably be cool, but 
that's not what I want, though. I don't know. What what, what do you think about that, uh, Thundera? I think that it's it's just as silly as Batman versus Superman. Yeah. It's just the whole concept, because obviously Godzilla would rip Kong to pieces. Um, especially this Godzilla, since he's freaking ginormous compared to the other Godzillas. Like, he's the second biggest Godzilla ever, or something like that. He's huge. Uh, unless they do some kind of serious fuckery to make Kong just as big or, you know, close to as big, the Kong we saw in the last movie was nowhere near as big as Godzilla. Like, they're not even close. So it would be just, he just stomp him out. One stomp, he could take him out, right? They'd be that if, easy. But what if, but what if King Kong says, save Martha? Well, that's fair. <laughs> that is fair. But I... I just want to see some kaijus. That that's really it. Yeah, no, if if true. they're just gonna give me Kong versus Godzilla for an hour and a half, okay, yeah. make it look cool. Give me some cool shit that happens, and I'm happy. It's a it's a Godzilla movie. If you're going to do a Godzilla movie with your brain on, you're doing it wrong. That's right. Just that's just right. shut it off and watch. Well, John, do you <laughs> do you know about King Kong and Godzilla? What do you mean? Do I know about them? I know as much as uh, the average layman should know about them. Oh, They're okay. monsters. And they break things. The, there you go. Okay, I just was checking. I didn't know if it fell into your cultural uh, purview. You know, <laughs> uh, Captain Canada in the chat. Um, my friend, my Canadian friend, yourself, and go fuck. Mix those around however you like, but just go fuck yourself. All right. <laughs> Like, am I am I hey, supposed yeah. to not be excited about this movie because there's not a giant chihuahua or something? <laughs> yes, that, that was I was kind of <laughs> leaning that way. I was. Uh, now I, I want there to be. Yeah, that would be amazing. Sure. The, the <laughs> mutated uh, the mutated chupacabra is that what I'm waiting? Yeah, for? the hairless uh, version. That'd be cool. Uh, we do have a lot of people in the chat though. I am happy to see everybody. We got Ara, of course, and he. You stick around, Ara. We're gonna be talking about uh, well. You know, the Bible. Uh, we got Flying Saucer here, Cultural and Video. Dave is in here as well. Roger, of course. Uh, we have uh, the Willy Mammoth is in here, which is very cool. Uh, let's see who else we got. Uh, and of course, we got Captain Canada, who's always well. Oh, we got Alan from the Howl Comics. Man, there's a bunch of people in here. Mothra, why did you say that name? <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, now, I, I could. Can... Guarantee you that Zack Snyder thought that was the cleverest thing in the world when he came up with when he realized that they have the same name. Their mothers. I guarantee you. He was like, he's, he's looking at a comic book and then one hand and he's looking at another one and the other hand. He's like, can this be right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the real question is, was John being clever or did he get lucky? Martha Mothra. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him two clever points. I'm going to give him to him. Where can I cash these points out? <laughs> <laughs> Quickly. As fastly as I get out of here, please. Uh, but <clears throat> anyway, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm the same as you. I, I'm, I'm happy to see uh, the kaiju fighting because the last movie, that was that was the only thing that movie, it had any value in the movie. Uh, and it was fun, mm -hmm. uh, which is the point. It's just supposed to be fun. But um, yeah, I... <sighs> It's just I don't like the premise, but uh, whatever. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, you know, it is fun, and I'm trying to rack my brain for a scenario where they could, you know, I don't, I don't see the size. This is great. If, if King Kong is this big, there's no way Godzilla has a chance. But uh, how can they? How can they kind of square that up to make it a, a good, not such a cringy? Oh well, he was he was so nerfed that uh, you know it ruined everything. Kind of fight. Well, but, they got to do something really clever. Yeah, but see, there's a big problem going against Kong. He's just a giant ape. I mean, that's it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, Godzilla has a little thing called atomic breath. Yeah. And apparently can go Super Saiyan, and, as he did in the last movie. That's right. That's yeah. a thing he can do now. So Kong's going to need some tricks. They're going to have to give him some tricks here. Yeah. Well, it, it, remember, we covered this. Be, we've been covering this for about a year or so. Uh, and uh, we did cover an article that talked about the fact that there's some kind of exoskeleton that's going to be on uh, Kong. Right? They've. Because uh, I. Mecha, he, like a Mecha Kong? Yeah, he's been. Uh, he's been. I think that's the reference they're making, actually. Uh, but uh, he's. I think he's being mind controlled, <laughs> and they got some, like, exoskeleton suit on him to, you know, because uh, they got to take out Godzilla, right? 
for for some reason, even though he just saved the world twice, yeah, and know. is literally c- defeating global warming just by existing. But he has to die. <laughs> he does, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, well, anyway, uh, I just thought it'd be fun to talk about, it, and uh, I think we all agree that uh, even though it doesn't make much sense, uh, bring it on, dude. Do you have any idea when this movie's coming? I don't. I think they're tr- they're hoping against hope that at some point all the theaters will finally be open again, uh-huh. and maybe people can actually go see it. Because this is a movie I actually want to see on a big screen. Yeah, oh yeah. I want to see the, the big boys on the big screen beating the hell out of each other. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it'd be cool. Uh, but I don't know, dude. I, I think movie theaters are in a real, real dicey situation, dude. Um, well, you, you just got to sit closer to your phone, that's all. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, I'm looking uh, forward to it, I'm sure. Let, 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 let's go over here. I, I wanted to start out with something happy because, you know, how life is. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I like to talk about board games, so let me uh, let me do that for a second. Now, This right here uh, is Eric Lang. Now, if you're not part of the uh, board game hobby, uh, then you don't know who the – you have no clue who this dude is. Uh, but this guy is equivalent to board games – uh, as Kojima is to video games. Uh, and you have, of course, a lot of fanboys will, will worship at the altar of Kojima, right? Well, Eric Lang mm-hmm. is the same type of thing. And uh, to be 100% fair, I own many of his games. The dude's freaking genius. Uh, his game design is absolutely brilliant uh, as far as mechanical f- uh, flow and and tightness and all the good little words you want to use when you're talking about a fun board game. This guy knows how to do it. He's just it's it's he's natural uh, and he and it's interesting. And you, I've seen him in many interviews. Uh, he's a nerdy nice guy. I mean he he he's just a big old nerd, kind of like Kojima is. Uh, now a lot of Westerners can't understand Kojima because you know someone's translating for it, but I can understand him. He's just a big old nerd. He comes across different, but that's not what he's. He's absolute nerd otaku, right? Uh, so with that said, old Eric here, he has a major, major infection of the TDS. My God level of it. And he got kicked off of uh, Twitter here. Uh, uh, what, 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 what was he doing here? And, and, and I understand that we're not talking about a board game directly, but this is one of the kings of board games. Right, you gotta keep, you gotta understand that um, uh, he is one of the most famous board game designers on the planet, possibly in history, I'd say. Um, and uh, he, of course, they list off some of the things he's done here. Blood Rage is an absolutely phenomenal game. Star Wars, the Game of Thrones games are really, really good. Uh, plus, many, many others. Uh, but uh, he says that uh, he became the target of thousands of baseless dwe- uh, basement dwelling reactionary shitheads, which he believes are fans of a scumbag serial harasser to whom I refuse to give free publicity. <sighs> Let's talk about Trump, by the way. Uh, so he basically <laughs> went on a tie read, uh, a tie screed, uh, we'll call it, uh, just yelling and screaming at everybody in the world about everything. And of course, when I understand, a lot of people are like, uh, we weren't even talking about Trump. Uh, but he lost his shit, and Twitter actually banned him. Uh, now, this is a blue check mark for sure. Uh, and we know how the uh, SJWs like to count coup and how many people they have in positions of power of various hobbies, right? They love that. It's important to mm-hmm. them. And this is one of the kings, dude, in board games, and he's on their side. But they still banged him because of his his he lost his freaking shit. Um, it's like what the world? What is the world coming to? This guy has created some of the most fun. Just you know, shut your brain off, have a good old time games you can imagine. But yet he's this past year he's frigging lost it, dude. Lost it. And I've been watching his downfall, and I haven't checked, but I bet you I'm banned too, just because. You know, I do believe I I I, I am on the uh, I do follow the uh, the real Trump. I think I do. But I put this up here uh, mainly to talk about the idea that, damn, it spreads far, man. Well, I, I've come to a, a realization after talking to some of her family members. Um, the problem isn't TDS itself. 
And the problem isn't necessarily the individuals who who clearly have something wrong with them when it comes to this with Trump. Like they're just opinion on him is just insane. Um, it's the fact that they the reason they have this is because the media has mentally abused them and gaslighted them so heavily that it's the it's almost a coping mechanism to just viscerally hate the guy for largely no reason. Even when he does something right, they still hate him. Yeah. Even something that like five minutes ago they supported, all of a sudden it's bad because he did it. <laughs> it's it's insane. It's an insane way to look at the world. It is. And yeah. it, it's a tragedy and a travesty what the media and and you know the academia or whatever, but really the media has done in the Trump years. The, the amount of hatred this guy has received from so many in the media and so many in the country, really, for being – he's basically just a basic president, except he's – the only thing he, he is is he's a little bit more, uh, like, deregulatory, and he's against war. Other than that, almost all of his policies are the same as the last three presidents. He hasn't made, like, drastic sweeping changes to things, and it, that just hasn't happened. It just has not happened. When you look at him by the numbers, by his policy, if anything, he's continued the trend of overspending, like every president has of the last three presidencies. He's really four if you go back to Reagan. He's uh, he, he, There's nothing about him that's crazy out of the ordinary except how much the media hates him. Yeah. Yeah. Because they thought they had won. They thought that this battle was over. They had won. They wouldn't have to deal with the man in the mirror, which is the reason they don't like Trump, because he reminds them of what this country really is like. Kind of a dick. Sounds like they might be incompetent, but somehow things get done because they just never quit. That's what America America basically is. Yeah. And that's why they don't like him, because he. that's the real reason they don't like him. They, the media, anyway. Their corporate masters tell them not to, but also because he makes them realize that they have not won like they think they have and the country's not the world that they pretend that it is. Yeah, no, I, I understand. And I agree with all that. I just think it's really sad uh, that it is. A, a hobby, and this can go for many hobbies, that had nothing to do with politics for whatsoever. I've been involved with war games for a very long time, right? Uh, I've even I helped fun, uh, fund some and run some, and uh, I've done all kinds of things uh, with board games. And it, it, it's not a place for that. It's just fun place, right? And it's so sad that it has just seeped in there. But, I mean, just looking at the list of the games, every damn game on this list, and the, they call it the abridged list because this is not all the games he's done. But every one of these were AAA mega hits. That's how many hits this guy's put out. Look at it, right? And and there's a couple in here that are just you know are will are instant classics like Warhammer Invasion is my favorite two player game. That thing is awesome, dude. Uh, Couriers very innovative. Uh, uh, it it changed it created a whole new genre of freaking board games, dude. Uh, Star Wars the card game. Uh, this is an LCG. Uh, it's epically legend now. Everyone loves this game. Uh, for the conquest, another great two-player game. Although you could play multiplayer in that, that's a great um, uh, uh, convention. Uh, like um, you know, you can win money in that game. Uh, you got Arcade Quest, another big hitter. Blood Rage, probably the biggest game you ever had. Uh, let's see, uh, Arcane Academy, another big one. Uh, Rising Sun, my God, what a famous game. Uh, Song of Ice and uh, Ice and Fire, uh, Cthulhu, and he did. Uh, he's done other stuff too, like Cthulhu card game. And uh, well, anyway, it's a huge list. This is just an abridged one. I just, it's like, damn it, Eric, damn it. But you got to be careful with where you're going to channel your attention because it seeps into everything you do, mm -hmm. no matter what. Now, when you sit down and you sit down to play a, a board game or a card game or something, everything melts away and you just start having fun. But it, it's all the lead up to it. If you're sitting around and you're and you're stewing every day and you're chewing yeah. on all this information and your hatred, yeah. it, it's gonna seep in before your game even starts. You know, it's really ugly and sad. It is, dude. That's yeah. a problem. It seeps into their brain and it rots there. Uh, I just, uh, you know, I I haven't I, I could have spoke about this sooner uh, because he's been doing this for a while now and it's just breaking my heart. You know, because he he's such a sweet guy. 
Uh, I mean, when I, I when I was in, you know, to the board, board games before they started getting infected here, uh, you know, a couple of years ago. But when I was really into board games, that was the only thing I paid attention to on the Internet. Right. I did my life, hung out with my family, did my job, all those kind of things. But on the Internet, I was into board game stuff. And, you know, I watch all kind of interviews and it's a very uh, welcoming and, and, and integrated uh, uh, community. Right. It's a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, you know, such a nice fellow. And he, he just I mean, God damn it, dude. He's he was it's so bad that this guy who is 100 percent on their side got himself kicked off of Twitter. It's it's shocking, dude. It's just shocking. And, he, you know, the thing is he, uh, that I don't think he realizes this, though. But, uh, uh, you know, there's people uh, in any uh, hobby that will be, oh, well, yeah, no, racism's bad and, you know, all those kind of things. They'll agree with your points, uh, but they're not on your side for some kind of crusade, right? And he has hurt his future with this. I guarantee it. Because the board gaming world is a family-based world, right? And kids are involved. And there's people of different colors and diversities. And no one ever cared. Didn't matter before now, right? Oh, whatever. I'm anyway, moving on. That's my board game segment for today. And yes, it is on freaking Kotaku. I see that. Thank you. All right. Oh, this is wonderful. Go ahead. <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077 Sex Speedrunner gets laid in just 11 minutes. We are all going to hell. That's all I got to say. Why? Why is. I don't know. Just why? I just saw it, and I was like, well, that's worthy. It's worthy, and here it is. Uh, what do you think about sex runs in Cyberpunk now, uh, John? Uh, don't say John. I don't even know what that means. Does that mean that, like, <laughs> is there, does this, because this is, like, the future we're living in, right, when it comes to video games and technology? Yeah, it is. Like, does this mean that you actually, like, find somebody in this game and, like, do, like, a Tinder thing and then hook up, or is it like guess, actual in game? I guess so. I don't know. I haven't played it, uh, but it sounds like you can uh, woo the ladies or, or whatever, I suppose, and you can get yourself some lucky action. Uh, I don't know how graphic the action is, but uh, oh, like, it's, you know, like, uh, you, it's there. Can you get yourself, or does your character? Your character. Yeah, well, that's what that's what I'm. That's from Sam. This is an MMO, the... right? No, no, no. It's single, single player. Pie. Oh, this is well, who cares? What the? I agree. Yeah, it's basically just a cutscene that plays. That's you know. <laughs> weird. And the worst part is, is the, the couple I've seen mostly is really weird. Like that's just it's it's a Hollywood rendition of what sex is like. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like the last eh. was cut scene, isn't it? <laughs> Oh no, it's not quite that grotesque. At least these people are attractive. <laughs> are they? Well, that's good. Uh, Chester Looking gets the special right hell Chiron thinks. All right, right. Well, I'll enjoy my specialties while you're uh, suffering over there with the pineapples up the ass. All right. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I just saw this and I was like, "There's no way this isn't going into the list, dude." I mean, you've got to be kidding me. Why is this a thing? But it is sex speed runs. All right, moving on. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, go ahead. Rumors. Animated Catwoman film in development for HBO Max. Um, I don't really care. I just like the picture. Yeah, what is... Who's that? Because that's, that's way a, more interesting than the headline. That's right. That's a nice Catwoman. I like that Catwoman. I want more of that one, but we're not getting that one. Uh, we're, we're getting ourselves a uh, diversity Catwoman again. She's even, got, she's even got nice shoulders. Like Whoever yeah. that is should definitely play Catwoman, is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you think it's a real, a real life model? I don't know. I guess it could, could be. be. I don't know. We got an artist in here. We could ask him. Uh, do you think that's a life model, John, or is that just someone drawn? Very good at drawing. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm watching the cyberpunk sex scene on YouTube. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did I disturb they're you, not, sir? They're not actually like showing anything at all. No, no. It's it's like a really weak rated R. This is the feet. point. Why is that so tantalizing? I don't know, dude. It's bizarre. Very lonely young men. That's why. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is a live action model, though. I think this is just a drawing. 
Could be. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But Got she it. needs to be real, and she needs to play Catwoman. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a nice looking lady. That's why I said I don't give a, I don't care anything at all about an animated Catwoman movie. Uh, if it's good, I'll watch it, I guess. But uh, uh, here's the thing: like... they keep they keep dumping everything on HBO Max. Hollywood is is in bed with this HBO Max, I guess. Uh, but who has? Uh, uh, raise your hands. Who has HBO Max? You can't tell, but I'm raising my hand. I uh, <clears throat> I was actually on there this morning trying to find uh, that movie that everybody's talking about, that Wonder Woman. I couldn't find it. I can I can send you a copy. Yeah, <laughs> oh, all right. Ended, ended up just watching Ford versus Ferrari for the first time. That was pretty good. Oh, I hear yeah. that's good. Yeah, got to check that out. Yeah, that's that's a good piece I, got of little, I got a little sad. I was like, oh man. Let's see if my link still works. Uh, if you guys give me a second, I should you have it. The though, radio I pay going. for this stupid thing. I should have it. I just don't know how to get there. Who knows? Who knows anymore with these places? I hear it's a uh, steaming pile of poop. Wonder Woman, nineteen eighty four. But I want to see. It. I saw her whip. I saw her lassoing and riding lightning. That well, here's no. here's a big problem. It's set in nineteen eighty four, but you wouldn't know it. By anything other than a few like set pieces and a couple pieces of clothing, from what I understand, like they don't like if you look at the soundtrack, there's no '80s music in it, none, including. Speaking of ride the light, whipping, lassoing lightning, ride the lightning by Metallica that came out in 1984 <laughs> would have been perfect for that scene. <laughs> Ah, it looked cool on the commercials, but I'm, you know, I'm not one of those people that gets all bent out of shape. Like, oh, that's not how it works. If it, if they make it work and it looks super cool, I'm all about it. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm gonna drop it over here on your screen. So if you want to share and talk about something, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. I got to go do something real quick. I do apologize. Uh, just go ahead. All right. Yeah. So I mean, I, when I saw that commercial for the first time, the the Wonder Woman, and she's she's, you know, the the music's playing. Is that music used to play when you were in high school and all that? And you're like, yeah, it's dope. And She's whipping that lightning and she's, she's flying around on it. It looks super cool. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I was like, I'm, I'm jazzed about this. I didn't like the first Wonder Woman at all. Mm -hmm. I thought it was crazy boring. And the boss fight at the end was like even lamer than the first Iron Man boss fight. It was terrible. But this one looked like, oh, I can, it was like, a, it was almost like a, uh, like a Thor, like a callback to the Ragnarok, you know, like, let's, let's make it fun. Let's make this character who normally talks like, uh, you know, Shakespeare and let's make her fun and cool and let's do something cool with it. Yeah. And it looked like it was going in the right direction for me. Now I know that I'm, you know, by myself when it comes to, uh, I thought Ragnarok was the best Thor thing I had ever seen because people, well, people it's, it's definitely, Thor, you know, uh, of his movies, it's the best movie. By far, definitely. Uh, I, Moon wants to know how fast can he have sex? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a. It's an interesting thing to brag about. Yeah, I'm really fast at sex. Uh, that's. I used to be until I hit 32 for some reason. Now I, I can't finish. <laughs> I, have... I, used to, I, I used to be able to like throw a condom off and just pop another one on and let's go. And, you know, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I just hit a brick wall and I'm like, I, this, this is a, this is a marathon a challenge. Oh, good Lord. The, uh, <laughs> uh, it was a lot. It was a lot of information. I'm trying to process it right now. You think about it. Sit back and ponder that for a while. <laughs> also imagine my face while you're doing it. <laughs> Oh, Jesse oh. saying Chester left to go see how fast he could have sex. <laughs> <laughs> he really had to take care of it right now. It was a sexual emergency. Like that Muslim in Europe, won, he won in court by saying he raped a girl because of sexual emergency. He had to have, had to happen. I'm sorry, what happened? He raped <laughs> a girl because of a sexual emergency? That's what he claimed in court. I think it was in Germany. <laughs> If he got off for it, they gave it. They, but yeah, that seems reasonable. <laughs> oh damn! He actually got off in both ways. Yeah. Oh no. But uh, no, I mean the Catwoman. She's a uh, Lady Celtic Moon says, "Oh deal, you should not have said the." <laughs> it just I don't know. when you get older, things take longer. 
but the, an animated Catwoman film in development for HBO Max. Now, is this going to be, because they're saying it's animated, so is this going to be another one of like the DC things, or is it this going to be like a big budget something they're talking about? I can't I really don't tell. No, because that is, a, the more I look at that, that's pretty clearly is a, some sort of drawing. Is it going to be like that? Because if so, the budget's going to be pretty high, or is it just I've going seen to be... some of the uh, some of the Batman stuff they put out is pretty high high budget, high quality animation. Yeah, um, I got I got to look this up a little. The Batman DC movie. animated universe, I think, is what they call it. The movies they make there are are better than anything Marvel's ever put out. A, few, a couple of them are, but they just for some reason can only make good animated movies, and then they go to make a live action movie and. Just everything falls apart. I, I don't know how that happens. But right, I'm going to read this. Uh, I'm going to read this because it's a, uh, what do you call it? I, I found the article. But I'm going to share my screen. I don't know if you have the ability to share my screen. Uh, not on YouTube, no, but I can look at it. Okay, so let me share that. Uh, just pulled up the website. Here we go. All right, so it says here, um, there seems to be, no, stop this. Stop that. Right, there seems to be, n not end to the DC properties Warner Media is interested in adapting for HBO Max, especially those surrounding the Batman, as the new rumor suggests that Catwoman will be next in line to receive a solo project for the fledgling streaming service. And then it has a, another image, another drawn image of Catwoman. Mm -hmm. Um, it says, beyond the trailer host and YouTube scooper Grace Randolph has reported that, according to her sources, Catwoman is set to receive an animated cinematic treatment in May of 2021 in her scoop. Randolph discloses HBO Max's, quote, getting a new animated hashtag Catwoman movie in 2021 and notes that the film is currently scheduled for release around May. That's, hmm. That doesn't seem to be much news at all. And it's very <laughs> strange that this is the first we're hearing about it if it's scheduled for release in May, which is only like five months from now. And then they have another image of Catwoman, but it looks like from a video game or something. And then it says uh, oh, yeah. Randolph closed with good to see WB supporting Zoe Kravitz, who plays the thieving feline and her dual identity, Selena Kyle in Matt Reeves upcoming, the Batman the film scooper also clarified that she did not currently know which version of Catwoman would appear in the animated outing. She says, all I got from my source is that it's coming and most likely in May don't yet know the voice cast or which version of Catwoman they're using. Huh? There seems to be absolutely nothing, like, uh, photograph-wise. They don't have anything. That's that's what's weird, right? If it's coming out in May, that's five, six months from now, and they got nothing? No yeah, promotion. In other material. words, this animated Catwoman m movie might not tie into the Batman at all, unlike its live-action police drama sister show on the same network. Uh, it's currently unknown whether Matt Reeves himself is involved in Catwoman's production, which unfortunately deprives audiences of one particular strong indicator that could have been used to indicate the progress of uh, the project's creative direction. It's also safe to presume the film will not reference any past cinematic iterations of Selena Kyle. Wow, you went and read it and everything. That's nice, dude. Well, you weren't here, just right? Started to panic. Well, thank you. I, I do apologize. Uh, it, the kids are out of school, so, well, whatever. Uh, someone stole someone else's mochi. You know how it goes. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, I don't know, you know, because uh, I let them use the, because <clears throat> I, I let them use the other side of the property here, right? Uh, for, you know, you know, because I just, it just let them use it free. Uh, so when they want to do kids stuff, when they're off, they have a whole bunch of the kids gather over there, do like little crafts and things like that. Uh, but the kids can see me, uh, across the courtyard, right? As I'm sitting here and there's a big, huge window, uh, uh, here on my, uh, on my left side and the kids can see me and they know who I am. So they'll walk themselves up in, uh, and, uh, you know, check out what I'm doing. Uh, and, uh, but for some reason I'm the guy you come to, uh, when someone has stole your damn mochi, right? Uh, not the old ladies that are sitting over there or the high schoolers that are supposed to be looking after them. No, no, it's gotta be me. Uh, oh, well, why is that? <coughs> we all got problems, Chester. All right? We do have problems. I'm ha I We're have here problem. for escapism, entertainment escapism. 
All right, we are. So let me let me get over here and figure out what's going on here. Uh, all right. Oh, there we go. Okay. We, good. we already just tested this article. This article seems to be completely just bereft of any kind of actual information. So. Well, no, I I'd put it up there because I like the picture. See, we were supposed oh, to move okay. on very quickly, but I, I, it's my fault. It's my fault. It's okay. Uh, so uh, here we go. Go ahead, uh, Thunder. Go ahead. One second. some reason it doesn't want to load because discord hates me there it is rumor new leaks confirm simon baz and jessica cruz to star in hbo max green lantern series yay i have no who, who no idea who they are next i think they're it, green lanterns it, I, it's not only that it, it's why i don't care i don't know why? who are they i don't i don't have any clue i think jessica cruz is one that ethan created it yes created it is. i'm being sarcastic but of course I, I just don't understand of all the lanterns and there's a, a lot of them they a lot are. of really famous ones cool ones why I, I know why but it's just like it's just so stupid it's not gonna work but they're gonna well, try they're gonna they, green lantern is a very famous name yeah. um it, it, it kind of breaks that barrier of like all these it's, it, Green Lantern is more famous than Miss Marvel. It's more famous than oh, a lot yeah. of these yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy they're putting out and all that stuff. And the thing is, they botched it so bad, so bad. They're gun shy, but they know that they have something that's valuable, possibly. Mm -hmm. So they're real scared about what they're going to do. Yeah, I think no, this I is think that's fair. Put out feelers. <clears throat> well, see, I don't mind them putting a couple of new new faces in there. I, that's fine with me. I, just, I think the point that Thundero's making as well as I, that I'm making is, uh, why don't we see the Green Lantern cores? Uh, you know, there's like yep. aliens and stuff. And we got this thing called uh, uh, computer graphics these days. And we can make all kind of cool aliens. Why aren't we seeing more of that? Oh, well, I know why. Because they're not the right diversity hire. Yellow aliens with uh, shit coming out their back doesn't uh, doesn't count. They got to be the same reason. Uh... <laughs> the same reason we haven't had a Star Wars. They're making all these Star Wars shows, and I think only one of them is starring an alien. Uh, why? Yeah, why not? I mean, it's it's supposed to be the Green Lantern Corps, from what I understand, right? So, I mean, yeah. I don't have no problem with them being in there, but I want to hear about, uh, <clears throat> you know, where you got to have Sinestro in there, you got to have Kilowog, you know, you got to have some of these other really cool aliens. Are we going to see some of them? That's what I. That's what yeah. I'm interested in. Well, that's what I'm saying, Chester. You can't. They, they're they're scared to do that because those are the main characters. When it comes to Hal Jordan, you you can't have Hal Jordan without Sinestro. You can't have it no, without Kilowog. And then they're saving these main bat. I mean, it's essentially like let's make a Batman movie, but we can't use the Joker. Or you could you could throw yeah, you could throw like Guy Gardner in there. I don't. I, I think he could have his own show. Why not? I think Guy Gardner is going to be in that show, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, I think he is. Yeah, I think he is. See, yeah, I there have was I, also some. Uh, there was also some speculation in the chat that you had left to see how fast you could have sex, but you came back pretty quick. <laughs> I did. I'm a master, <laughs> sir. Uh, <laughs> that's actually, of course, if you guys knew what I was doing, that's very inappropriate. It's very inappropriate. You should all be ashamed of yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't. It was Lady Celtic Boone. She was doing it. Lady, the, these, these. <laughs> She was like six years old, bad, bad person, bad. Uh, but <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, uh, speaking of that, I think I'm going to go lock the door. I'm going to do that. I'll be back in a second. Abandon again. Yeah. I just, no, I, I don't know. I think Gardner's going to be in this because I think he's going to be the, uh, essentially the bad guy that has to get reformed because he's supposed to be super macho. They, I think I had read somewhere that they had hired somebody or thinking about somebody that was super macho, uh, very, very white, very... Uh, oh, of course, <clears throat> right. Yeah. Toxic masculinity. White patriarchal male. He's got to be reformed. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh. Have, you know how they are. Ugh. All of it. it. It could be such a cool, like, they could have it be like a buddy cop show with the with the lanterns. And it could just be so cool and refreshing and light, it kind of lighthearted, but then gets serious when it needs to. And instead, it seems like they're setting it up to just be another preachy, woke, nonsensical thing like that Batwoman show is. That is nobody, be literally no one likes. I believe so, yeah. That literally nobody likes. Yeah. <laughs> it's too bad, man. Batwoman could have been fun. 
And, uh, yeah, I know, uh, once again, leaving me alone there, uh, Thundera, but you can't see what I can see. See, I can see across the courtyard, they're like a bunch of gremlins. <laughs> it's like 50 they, of them, they dude. Get water and eating after midnight. <laughs> anyway, uh, I just don't, you know, whatever. I mean, it's the cores. Cool. You know, have all of them in there. I just... I'm not interested in every article being about some woke issue with it. Why don't you talk more about who's the villain? What's going to be going on yep. with it? It's always something about diversity with these damn articles. And it's like, you know, whatever, man. Next. Patty Jenkins worries Wonder Woman 3 is in jeopardy. Uh, you think so? You think, yeah. Jeez. But maybe well, I don't think Wonder Woman 3 is in jeopardy. They'll probably make a third one. I think Patty being anywhere near it. Is what's in jeopardy. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame though, dude. I mean, she's done a lot of little things. This was her first real big swing at the bat, right? I mean, swing at the plate. Sorry, uh, I, I went Biden there. Damn it, uh, Biden did. Yeah, I Biden did. Uh, but uh, this is her first real big, big chance, right? And and it didn't come out so good. I, you know, I think she's got some talent. I, I think it's unfortunate, uh, but I I also kind of wonder how much of this was her own choice. Like having Linda Carter at the end kind of giving you this wink, wink uh, end credit, that was her, I think. That's a very lady thing. The way they did it is a very lady thing to do. But some of the other stuff in there, my, was it really her choice? Uh, I mean, This one for the girls. Nah. A terrible know. director. Uh, okay. I'm looking at the stuff that you've done here on, on the Wikipedia. All I right, like fine. I'm just trying to be nice, John. Just trying to be nice. Uh, but be it nice. is unfortunate. Uh, yeah. Well, because the first movie wasn't great, but it was watchable, dude. That was certainly entertaining. Uh, and it's a shame that this one turned out such a hot mess. But it's it's a, it's a mess across the board. The acting, it, it, but you know what it is. This is what happened. This is my opinion. But I'm, I'm going to tell you what I think. We had a whole bunch of noise going against uh, Schneider, right? People are really uh, yeah. not you know, on the Warner Brothers side and the fans and stuff are really pushing hard against Schneider. And everyone's like, well, we need to do something more like Marvel. But instead of doing it like Marvel, they went wacky and goofy with Shazam, right? They're like, we need to do more of that. And that's what uh, that's what Josh Whedon tried to do with the Justice League when he came in, to make it wacky and fun, right? So I think what they were doing initially, especially with Kristen Wiig being in there, was they were going to make this a comedy. That was the intention. And then AT&T bought Warner, came in and says, uh, yeah, no, we're going Schneider all the way because that's our boy. And then they were like, ah, oh, God, and they had to go back and change it. But they were already stuck. They couldn't redo the whole movie from scratch. I think that's the problem. That's what it seems to me. Just a reminder, there is no director, singular director in Hollywood more overrated than Zack Schneider. Doesn't exist. That's fair. There are that ones that fair. are just as overrated, but not more. He's the him and J.J. Abrams are the absolute zenith of oh, yeah, no, overrated. JJ's number one for sure. Yeah, he's uh, way overrated. Yeah. But uh, what do you think about my 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 synopsis? Synopsis. Synopsis. I went Biden it again. Um, uh, of my what, what I think happened. I don't know the uh, I don't know the actual timeline about when that happened, and it, was it in the middle of the filming or what, had it already been finished? Uh, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that's fair. I, I haven't seen the movie yet. I can't even tell you, dude. I'm sorry. Mm. And, uh, oh. Where's that movie? Uh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hang on. I was making sure it still worked. Here you go. I got right, to watch it before I before I because the thing is, a lot of people say a lot of garbage about that's these true. movies, and I got to watch it myself. That is like, true. I really got to watch it myself. Yeah. I went. <laughs> I went and actually, I was convinced to go and 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 purchase for rent that movie, Fat Man, because everybody thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. God damn that movie! It's not, it's not good. Like, the ending of that movie is like the equivalent of like some drunk guy falling over and splitting his pants. It's, it's just the worst thing I ever saw. Oh uh, no! Aw, I'm gonna check it out too, though. <clears throat> I am looking forward to that. Oh, someone's upset. Uh, but <clears throat> I am. No, she's watch. actually excited. She just got first place in the game she's playing on her phone. Oh, and that's nice. nice. <laughs> uh, but I am going to watch it. But uh, yeah, no, I it, people are really hating on this because you got uh, all three sides. You have the the SJW side, or the progressive side. Uh, they're angry because it wasn't progressive enough. You got this the other side who's angry because it was progressive, 
And then you have the people in the middle that are angry because it was a shit movie. So it's like, damn, dude. I don't know at what point... Uh, I can take a guess, but I don't know specifically at what point in Hollywood they all collectively forgot that you cannot please everybody. Yeah. And, and for some reason, they all believe that the people who are perpetually angry all the time are pleasable. There's no way to make them happy because they hate themselves. Yeah. So they will never be happy with what you give them because they'll always look at it through the lens of their own misery. Yeah. Well, you know, Thunder, I was watching the, the uh, uh, Midnight's Edge uh, podcast, the uh, live, live stream the other day. Uh, and they mm-hmm. were talking about this and they tore this movie apart, dude. Um, and if you guys have never <clears throat> checked out Midnight's Edge, go do so. I mean, I don't have any connection to them whatsoever, but go do that. Uh, because those guys are very knowledgeable about movies, and they're clearly connected. Clearly. They've got some inside uh, uh, avenues over the, going on over there. Uh, but they told this be. I mean, you look at this picture, like, you know, Patty Jenkins worries Wonder Woman 3 is in jeopardy. You know, when I was used to watch movies when I was growing up, if the movie didn't do well, there wouldn't be a number three, and there wouldn't be a reason to suspect there was going to be a number three. That's true. You know, when the movie comes out and it bombs, you drop it. That's right. I'm sorry. You have to. I mean, these things cost a lot of money yep. to make. And if you're going to make something that may or may not be, you know, good, like, what the hell? Mm. You got you got to come out. You got to come at this with you got to read the script and say, God, this movie got to get made. It's so good. We're going to do it. You know, yeah. not how are we? Of course, we're going to do it. Let's figure out how we can make it not fail. No. No, yeah. you don't do it until you know it, this is so good. It's got to be a success, you know? Well, they've always had trouble uh, with Wonder Woman. It's always been a difficult character for them to sell, uh, which I it's too bad because I think it's a cool character. It has a good story. Uh, but, um, yeah, because Wonder Woman herself in the comics is a terrible, awful person with no loyalty at all. Oh, that's true. You know, and uh, and the murders. thing is, Gal Gadot is extraordinarily beautiful. She's likable, and when she smiles, she lights up a room. Why would you not make it a comedy? Why would you not make it fun? Yeah. You know? Gentlemen, I actually have to go. Apparently there's something going on and I have to take my wife to it literally right now. I might it's only like two minutes from here, so I might be back. But that sucks because I really wanted to do the TFT, so I might not make it back. But if I do or don't, it's fine. I'll see you guys later. All right, well have fun with that. All right, so uh, uh, Linda Carter, mm, yeah, dude, uh, John, could you, uh, I'm kind of bogged down here behind a bunch of software, uh, could you do me a favor and uh, do a quick search on how old Linda Carter is, because damn, she still looks fine, dude. Uh, yeah, I'll take a look real quick. Huh? Uh, she does, she, she's 69 years old. Damn, dude, damn. Six, nine, that's, yeah. that's just a, a tiny blonde one away from 70 yeah she's a beautiful lady dude she's a beautiful lady um uh, and uh good honor for that and they got got, because i haven't seen her forever other than she was doing those kind of uh commercials she was doing right uh but um it was nice to see her in the cameo and it sounds like uh uh, patty wanted to put her in the third one more uh at playing a different character and i think that'd be cool uh but anyway uh i'm moving on from this but it's uh I agree with John. Uh, uh, well, why are we worrying about a third one when the second one, this movie has bombed hardcore? Uh, and uh, I think it's sad, though, because I didn't mind the first one. I give it a five. Maybe is, I, I did mind the first one. I didn't like it. I thought it was not very good. Well, but, no, uh, it's not a it's not a, a, a awesome movie you remember, but it's at least a five, John. Yeah, I, I give it a five. But I said when I saw the trailer for this movie, I thought it was going to be an eight. I was like, "Oh, this looks fun. This is gonna be like Ragnarok style fun. fun. Yeah, look great." And yeah. then, but and the thing is, I love Godot. She's she has the look. She oh, has shit, it. She does perfect. She's awesome. Yeah, dude. yeah. And the bull, yeah. you know. I agree. <laughs> and, uh, no, I agree. It's a shame, but you know, we may have to reboot this because uh, it, it it's a if it's a miserable failure, it's a miserable failure. Yeah, you don't keep beating a dead horse. Yeah. Well, and it's another thing too. They keep wanting to put this Chris, uh, Kirsten or Kristen Wig in movies. First of all. She's not a really an actual actress. She's not one. Two, she's not funny. Have you ever seen her funny ever? No, Kristen Wiig is funny. I haven't seen it. Now there might be stuff. Like, here's the thing. Now I, this may be a by comparison thing, but she is single handedly carrying Saturday Night Live. Ah, see, I don't watch that show anymore. It's so bad, dude. Um, yeah, her 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 skits on it can be very funny. 
All right. Um, but, but again, her, her politics are out, out of control to the point where, you know, it, it's really hard to look past it. Yeah, that's a problem too, right? That is, that's a whole other issue. Uh, but that, it's a different conversation. Let's move on here, try to get through this, because uh, I'm going to try to, you know, kill 20 minutes here and see if we can't get Thundar back. But uh, uh, let's move on. Uh, uh, yes, the Bible is coming, Joe. I'm going to get to it. We're going to start our, uh, we're going to start, start our hundred and uh, uh, what is it? Uh, let's see, let's see, it's 120. 100 and, uh, 132 part series. We're starting it today. All right, John. Uh, you got kids, little ones. Uh, I've had kids. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, this the article right here, Hasbro replica of Star Wars Dark Saber, labeled the most dangerous toy of 2020. Uh, this is single mom problem. That's what this is. Uh, this is a tactic to make it a bestseller. It might be. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair. Uh, but uh, there actually is uh, the care or uh, some watch group that uh, that said this is dangerous kids might hit themselves with it uh yeah that's the point lady i uh, I, I made a toy for my nephew about two years back uh-huh. i made it i made him a wooden sword uh in the shop you know it's a there's some woodworking even some hand some hand woodworking you know some whittling and stuff to get this thing looking just right it looked like one of those toy swords you might see a uh, kids playing pirates you know little mixture of that, a little mix of uh, little rascals. And he had the absolute greatest time with that wooden sword. Yeah. And I even made a little scabbard for it and a shield, a wooden shield to go over his hand. Nice. (laughs) And he was beating the hell out of the drywall, the couches, the the cat, his sisters. And, you know, it was, and the thing was, you could see in his face, he was having the time of his life. Oh, yeah. You got to let these kids play with things that are fun. Yeah, no. You know, you can always yell at them. You can always send them outside with their toys, you know? You can. And, you know, uh, we actually had, it's interesting you said that, because uh, <laughs> when I was a kid myself, uh, we used to take the garbage can lids. I don't, I don't know if you're old enough to remember the, uh, the old tin can garbage cans. They Never. still sell those. They do. Okay. Uh, well, we used to take the lids, and we used to just take a stick, and we used to just beat the hell out of each other, right? Have, it's fun. Uh, and there was a guy in the neighborhood. Um, you know, he's kind of uncle type guy that uh, paid attention to the kids and stuff from time to time. And uh, he actually did throw a bunch of little sword, wooden swords and shields together for us. Uh, they weren't very well made, <laughs> but but they were fun. It was a cool thing for him to do. Uh, <clears throat> he also made us those um, uh, those little rubber band gu- uh, guns. You remember those? Yes. Yeah, those yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. yeah, those were awesome. Uh, but it was and fun, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> If you're not uh, aiming for the face, you ain't aiming right. Yeah. That's right. You ain't do it. Go for the eyeball, dude. Uh, but uh, yeah. this is this is from Watch W A whatever it stands, whatever the a- acronym stands for. Uh, but the world um, against toys causing harm. Oh, nice. This is a Karen issue. This is a single mom thing. This is why you need a dad in the house. This is why, so you can tell the woman to back it up, lady. That's what you need. You need a man up in there to uh, kind of to kind of tamper down the woman's protectiveness because it's a good thing a woman being overly protective love and all that good stuff that a woman brings to a family is awesome dude it's it's essential right you know you and i both know that's why you were talking about earlier that uncle type and which is also essential you need that um what do they call it they call it um un it's it's unsome it's it's untamed masculinity you know, when you get married, your masculinity gets tamped down a little bit. But when you have that single uncle yeah. that's still uh, out there doing stuff, he brings that energy to a, a, a playtime situation that you just can't get anywhere else. It's invaluable. Yeah. No, it's true. Um, and uh, if I think back about it, he probably was only in his late 20s or early 30s or so. Uh, he wasn't super old guy. I was just a kid at the time. Uh, but no, that these things are important. The, we, we used to have these pretty solid running communities and things that got busted up recently, dude. And that's exactly what this is. There's nothing wrong with this toy. It's made from freaking Hasbro. You know it's safe. You know it is. Well, what is that? Uh, what exactly? Uh, what exactly? Because I know they had a quote down there somewhere. What are they saying is wrong with the toy? Well, the problem is, is they're worried that kids will bonk each other in the head with it. And it's like, yeah, yeah. of course. The See, here we go. It, for fun and entertainment, many toys contain hidden hazards, unnecessarily putting children at risk of injury or death. Mm, death. Watch wrote. 
<laughs> shockingly classic toy dangers such as small parts strings projectiles toxic substances rigid materials and inaccurate warnings and labels continue to reappear in new generations of toys putting children at risk mm. i don't get it i don't get it i uh, know well swing uh, for battle there it is swing for battle this is an ancient black bladed lightsaber made of rigid plastic with the potential for facial and other impact injuries <laughs> Yeah, that's well, what it's I mean. a black gun. It's a black gun. They're scared of it. it it's it a is, black dude. bladed weapon. Oh my god. Yeah, it, it's it, it's a it's a single mom problem, dude. It really is. Of course, they're gonna bonk each other in the head with it. That's point. That's the point. You know, this is all rounded. Look at the tip. It's all everything's rounded off. Uh, I'm sure that look, measurement is bigger than your I have a, I have a two and a half eye. year old daughter. Yeah. I have a two and a half year old daughter, and she helped me this year wrapping Christmas presents. Aww. Okay, now. I treat her like a girl. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much like we put her in dresses. We say how beautiful, how cute, you know, whatever. Sure. Without any kind of prompting, she took the empty wrapping paper tube and began to hit people about the, the legs and head with it. We've never gave her a toy where she hits people with, but she found this, this, this wrapping paper tube, this cardboard tube, yeah. and that became her weapon of choice yeah. and wanted to play. Yeah. I thought it was fantastic. And that's the kind of stuff you just can't, you can't teach that stuff out of people because it's not something you can teach out of people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, John, how did you learn to swim? Uh, my dad would throw me into the pool. And uh -huh. then when I would kind of try to swim at him, he would keep pushing me away. Yep. Same thing with me, except for it was a lake. Dad threw me oh. in the freaking lake, jumped in after me, and and watched and pushed me back every now and then to make me force me to. For swim. me, it was at the we called it the plunge. It was the local uh, community pool. Yeah. Well, I mean, <clears throat> but however you do it, a lot of people, especially the older generation, this is how they learn to swim. Just throw them in and let them. You know, uh, the kid might think they're about to die, but of course, you, the parent is there. Is going to is going to keep the situation safe enough. Uh, but <clears throat> this idea is terrifying to these kind of people dude it's terrifying that is abuse they would have us uh, our our fathers thrown in jail for that but yet it but damn it if i didn't learn how to swim john yeah right absolutely so, absolutely anyway I never, uh, I never had you know the inflatable uh, what do they call those uh, uh, water wings <laughs> oh yeah just, no. here, here's yeah. the water to figure it out or else you're not going to be able to have fun with your cousins that's right you got to be right. that kid that's coming over and crying because they splashed you and you can't and you can't swim and, and what the hell is that going to do well and then and these people would kick the other kid out of the pool right yeah 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 it, it's it's not how you do it it makes you tougher it does make you tougher and that's one of the big problems it's called tough love uh, uh we don't have as much of that and like i said it's the growing rate of uh, uh, of single moms. That's the problem. Uh, you it know, is. And let me tell you something else. I went to a birthday party recently. Damn, damn the restrictions uh, for the coof. But we went to a, a, a party, right? Yeah. They had, the parents had rented two separate jumpers, one for the bigger kids and one for the smaller kids. Oh, wow. Now you that... don't do that. You know, the, the whole you're getting hit by the cousins that are all grown and try to, you know, infiltrate while you're trying to jump in there. I mean, that's stuff that all kids go through and it toughens them up, you know, you because you want to play with the older kids because they're older and they're cooler. You want to be in there, you know, and, and also, instead you're regulated to the kitty jumper. Yeah, but but it's also that the older kids are going to look out for you. Right. Mm hmm. Uh, and, yeah. and with the, having a separate like that, you're not having anyone looking out for them because the, you get the older kid, it might be a little rougher stuff. But um, in general, they're going to look out for little kids. It's like an automatic reaction, right? Um, and uh, just offhand, I'm going to move on to the next article. But uh, Chiron, uh, I can't put your message through. Uh, YouTube has been doing a lot of things. We can't drop links now. Uh, they've also, uh, uh, instead of allowing me to choose what goes through on my stream, because they it'll come up for review, right? Your, your, your comment has been held for review. It says, uh, Grandma would say you drown in that pool, uh, 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 you drown in that pool and I'll kill you. Yeah, that's right. Um, they, mm -hmm. But you can't, I can't yeah, show I was it. just trying to click show on that. It wasn't working. It was saying error. Yeah, it, it, and it's because YouTube has made a decision that they are the arbiters of what should be seen in chat, not us anymore. So I don't even know why they're bothering to even give us an option since we can't use it. We can hit hide, I guess. Let me check. Can I Can I even hit hide? 
nope, it won't let me do nothing. So what's the point? Anyway, that's oh YouTube my. for you. Yeah, they're, they're in charge now. Uh, now, this right here, uh, John, it's uh, DC Comics Harley Quinn is ready for Santa uh, in a pinup. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, it's the only thing she's useful for. Other than that, she's a useless character. Uh, so let's check it out. They got a bunch of little pictures here. Oh, little Harley Quinn. Aw. Aw. And uh, she's she's with her lesbian friends. Nice. Nice. She's she's knocking out a guard. You know, that always bugs me. Uh, you have these, these highly trained super assassins coming in. They get taken out by a teenage girl in the middle of her freaking biology lab. Uh, I, 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 God, I hate that dude. <laughs> right? Yeah, it was like watching the Mandalorian. Did you, did you watch that Mandalorian? Where they set him up to be essentially King Kong. He's the biggest, baddest man in all the land. He got missiles coming out of his kneecaps. He's punching people and Boba breaking Fett. buildings when he's punching. Yeah, Boba Fett, and then he gets beat up by a girl the next episode. Yeah, no, and, and uh, I was like, "Ooh, you're gonna try. You're trying to make a, a, a you know, a, a split off a, a mini series with him too." Uh, but yeah, no, you know, I have a, when I watched that, I said to my wife, uh, "I think that John Favreau had to make a deal for that episode with uh, Kathleen Kennedy. Uh, she got to get her uh, woman empowerment, and he got to have Luke Skywalker." I, I, I have, a, I have a feeling. Yeah, uh, but uh, let me see. I got another one over here. Is this going to let me put it through? Oh, they let me put that one through. Okay, uh, so I don't know what it is about uh, Chiron's one. They didn't like that at all. Uh, but uh, let's go through here and let's take a look. Ooh, we got some more. Har Ooh, that is a very famous Harley Quinn one. <clears throat> uh, ooh, kisses with the Joker. Nice. Stupid costumes. Yes, yes. Okay, where where's my pinup, damn it? Oh, here it is. All right, let's take a look, John. Let's see if it's uh, worthy of our attention, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Uh, what are you doing? I know who you are on Instagram now. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, oh, all right. Well, what do you think, John? Uh, I like it. Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah, bad. It's okay. It's soft. Yeah. It's uh, Christmassy. Yeah. And and for me, that's the only value this character really has. I, You guys know I don't like Harley Quinn. It's a dumb character. It's just dumb. She's pretty. Hey, uh, her her being her being any kind of a, a fighter is dumb. It is dumb. Her as a character is just fine. Well, yeah, but no, the, her being the... a be behind the scenes planner and that kind of stuff makes sense. She's a very smart person. That's you know rock on. Uh, but the fighting thing I can't stand. Uh, but once again, why are we getting a pinup? Because as far as I understand, Harley Quinn is full on lesbian now. I mean, hardcore lesbian. So is this some? This is just some sort of fan art, right? I guess. It's not for us, I suppose. Don't look at it, John. Don't look. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's not no, a bad it's good. It's not, it's not great. It's not great, but it's good. I, I don't I don't like the way that mallet head is sitting on that mallet handle. <clears throat> it's a little bit off, but... It uh, is off. It's okay. And I think the uh, left leg is a little the, off. You can tell it was, uh, the left leg? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty much right. Uh, it's just that the problem is they put the suit on her um, over a nude model because oh. it's uh, the way the anatomy is hanging and stuff. It's they don't account for the suit being on her, but it's okay. It's it's all right for what it is. I like yeah, it. yeah, I agree. Oh, that, ooh, there's some other spicy ones down here, John. Damn, boys and Ivy. Exact same pose. That exact same pose. It is. Yeah. <laughs> that's the exact same drawing. They just made the couch. She's in Florida instead of uh, New yeah, York. Yeah. So they kept the model. They just changed the outfit and stuff. Uh, there's some sexy stuff here. Once again, they got Poison Ivy, who she's all lesbian now. So I don't know why we're not supposed to look. Don't look at the picture, John. Don't look. Um, this, but this artist. At it. Yeah, I know. Uh, this artist is not bad. They're trying. Uh, this is uh, Teary Art. Teary. I don't know who Teary is, but uh, awesome. Rock on. Uh, I already oh, talked no, about this one, a, and I did that one. Well, what do you say? Teary, Teary Art was it was liked by Teary Art. It, oh, I the, see. That, we, actually, A Y Y A S A P. That's the artist, I think. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, been a good boy this year. You can get uh, this piece with many others. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. The Gum Road. What is Gum Road? I believe it's the place where you can go. You can put your stuff online. They print on demand type deal. Hmm. You do clothes too as well. Oh, oh cool. I, I've never heard of it. Uh. <clears throat> Let's see, the chat is over here talking about stuff. She's cute. 
Tata reads the Bible on night owls, and I see this smut. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I, 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 I do apologize. Uh, I guess I should get into the Bible stuff then, huh? All right, these guys are pushy, man. They are pushy. I always do the TFT stuff at the they're, end of the show. They're holding guys. you on a quick count on they, your clickbait. They I are. came here for the Bible. I do apologize. Let me go ahead and get it up then. Oh, well, I didn't mean it like that. Okay, Chester. <laughs> The Bible. All right, fine. Let me see here. Uh, here we go. I'm not going to be much help to you at all, Chester. I know very little about the Bible. Oh, that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, and run the uh, intro, though. Here we go. All righty. Well, the Bible. Hmm. Now, I, I always thought this kind of interesting. Uh, I wish Booster was here because he it's funny, uh, easier to make fun of him. Uh, but uh, what does the Bible mean, John? What does this word mean, Bible? Uh, from what I know, I think the Bible is actually like a, a variation of the Greek word for book. It is. So why do we run around and say the book i'm kind of curious uh, i've also uh, heard it said uh, a lot of a lot of people like to put the little acronyms up for bible and as basic instructions before leaving earth oh yes no i've seen that as well uh and i'm kind of wondering why this isn't showing uh, uh i'm still did, looking at harley quinn over here <laughs> yeah no and I, i'm kind of wondering what happened to my thing uh, let me try to fix it real quick uh let's see here um it seems like uh, my video has popped out. Yes, I know. Where is it? Oh, I see. That's where it is. Huh. Uh, <coughs> goodness great. Okay, let me see if it's showing, though. It's not showing. What the hell's going on, John? I don't know, but Joe Marone is upset. He says, I got five minutes till Wapner starts, so you better hurry it up. Oh, damn it. All right, fine. Let's see if I can't get it going now. It's It doesn't oh my God. Now, there's, now, Carlos Tyron put Bible in the chat, and they held it for review. Really? Yeah. And he didn't even put it like, he didn't even spell it right. He even separated it a little bit. <laughs> huh. Um, I don't know what's going on. I can't get it to show, John. Well, I don't know. I don't even know what you're trying to show. Well, let me come over here and uh Maybe you can share my screen and I'll show it. But... Uh no, let me try again. Uh let's see if I can't uh do like this. Um Huh. There it is. I see it now. We All just right. gotta wait to see if it shows. No, I got it YouTube. working now. I got it where I do apologize, guys. Um what anyway. exactly I mean the Bible's kinda of big topic. What is what is what is about the Bible? That's why it's 130. Well, that's why it's a 132 part uh, uh, series, John. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, we're getting a little bit of interference. So anyway, let me go and do my spiel, I guess, and then we can talk about it. Um, all right. So <clears throat> the Bible. Uh, of course, uh, it does mean the book. Uh, that's why they kind of have that adjective on the front of there, John. It's called the Holy Bible, the Holy Book. You know, that, that's kind of important. Uh, but uh, do you know, John, where does the Bible come from? Do you have any idea? Uh, uh, yeah, like you're, you're roboting hard. I can't hear you. Uh, but um, uh, that's all right. I'll just kind of go forward. Uh, but anyway, uh, of course, uh, they kind of put the blame on this guy. <clears throat> His name is Hezekiah of the Judah. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's... Uh, uh, he was kind of like, you know, we got all these stories and histories and stuff like that. Uh, maybe we should put them together. So he went and he talked to his scribes and he said, yeah, you know, put these things together. Uh, let's uh, let, let's get a look at them. And they started working on it. And then he got upset and says, uh, my sugar, why did you put them on the ground? He did like that. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, uh, that was a joke. Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, but uh, the thing is, uh, this went on for quite a while. And what we know was the Torah or the Old Testament uh, was put together uh, uh, around, you know, a couple hundred years before uh, uh, the ADs, right? Um, and okay. 
you know, and that's that's interesting enough. Uh, but uh, the stories, of course, are much older than that. But we're talking about how we got to the Bible. All right, so we got this 800-year period where they started working on it, and then we come all the way up to uh, the Council of uh, Mycia, uh, which, uh, uh, of course, it, it, oh, there's Santa. And uh, he's in there somewhere, by the way. Santa Claus is in there somewhere, just so you know. I see you. Yeah, there he is. Oh, got him. There he is. Uh, but uh, not it's this dude over here, I think. Uh, but anyway, uh, they, uh, of course, uh, did this, uh, uh, you know, a few hundred years after uh, the turning of the baby Jesus. Uh, and uh, they put together the complete Bible. Now, the thing that's interesting about that, uh, the, the Bible in general, uh, John, is the fact that there are 66 books in the Bible. 66. Uh, and that's an interesting number of uh, in and of itself. But uh, did you know that that's like half, like literally half of the books that they were using? Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah. No, I had no idea. So, uh, but looking at the TV. list, that, well, no idea. But looking at the list they kept, John, uh, oh, what's your favorite? Ah, uh, my favorite. Let me see. I would have to say uh, probably Job or Jonah. Ah, uh, Job and Jonah, those are good ones too. Uh, me, I, I, I'm a little bit, uh, 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 a little bit uh, partial to uh, Habakkuk. Uh, I kind of like that one. That was a good one. It's Habakkuk. What yeah. are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> we got the Philippines and we got the Galatians. Um, anyway, I also like Acts. Acts. I, I, the thing is, the books that I like are the books that tell big, long, but actually a little bit descriptive stories. I like those. Yeah, no, and of course, those are histories, um, and uh, there's a lot of good stuff in that, and uh, I'm going to get into that in a moment, but uh, uh, the interesting thing I want to talk about today was, because we are going to do it, I, I mean, I'm joking, we're not going to do a long series, obviously, uh, but uh, I, I do want to do a few shows talking about the Bible and how it came to be and where it comes from, uh, but uh, here's an interesting thing, John, um, when we look at the well, what they call the Apocrypha, right? Uh, uh, of the Bible. Here's just kind of a smattering of them. Uh, these are the 15 that are officially called Apocrypha. Of course, you have another one, which they don't mention, the Book of Enoch. And then you have the uh, uh, the, the books, the 50 books of um, the Gnostics as well, which are completely left out. And do keep in mind that uh, at that time, before the Catholics took it over and made it their own thing, uh, the Gnostics were the Christians. So those 50 books would have been the actual Christian stuff. But the Romans who created the Catholic Church, they wanted to distance themselves from that and make it their own thing. They did it intentionally. But here's the interesting thing, John. Uh, the books they kept are a number in 66. How many books of Apocrypha do you think there are? Um, 66. Yes. Now, is I, that not see, I, I remembered earlier when you said half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm just saying it's it, it's a shocking number, isn't it? It is. 66 and then 66 left out. It, literally half of the Bible was left out. And to be, uh, uh, you know, and do understand this, uh, I'm going to go back over, I'm not looking at the chat right now because I'm on the other side uh, here dealing with this presentation, but um, I will come back and look at your comments. Uh, I don't, I'm not here or care to knock on faith whatsoever. I don't, I don't, that's, that's cool. That's your thing. And I actually think faith is a very useful thing. I also think that religion can be a very good thing as well. I'm not an anti-religious person in the least. I'm really not. Uh, I just want to kind of look at how we got what we got and how we got here, because it's not where it's coming from. Uh, when they did create the Catholic Church and the the uh, Bible, this you know, which you know, th a thousand years later was created uh, by King James, of course, that are the one the version that all English people read. Um, that is literally not only half of what the the books that they had in their religion; it's the half that were not the main focus, because the main focus for them were the Gnostic books, and none of them made it in. None of them. And it's very telling to me. It's as if uh, we went, uh, John and I went over and we found this religion that was starting to get popular and we took, uh, and they had a whole bunch of old books that they referenced uh, in, to add it to their religion, but that wasn't really their religion. We cut all their religion out. We just took the old books. That's what it, that's what happened. And it's funny to me that these dudes over here uh, at this, uh, uh, you know, Council of Nicaea, uh, would allow it. Now, I understand that Constantine was being quite bullish 
uh, and quite troublesome. But uh, why would they allow this to happen, I wonder? Uh, because I can't imagine they were happy about it. Uh, but um, uh, another really important point that I, like I said, I, I will get into more specifics next week. Uh, but I just want to kind of lay the idea out. Another thing to keep in mind that these old stories, now not the necessarily ones with the the Jesus that keep in mind were written well after the supposed time of Jesus. Uh, although the, some of them are based on letters, some of them are based on hearsay uh, <clears throat> when they were actually written. Um, but the stories, like what John said, the ones he likes, the ones that uh, have all the, the great uh, you know wars and fighting and the stories and things where people doing things like King Solomon. Do you like King Solomon? I don't like the guy. I like the story. Stories are good. Wouldn't you like look to have read... Look at Joe in the chat. Now, now, we finally got to the Bible, and Joe was talking about the stimulus bill. What yeah, the... right. There you go. Yeah. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, the thing is, the actual stories of Solomon, you don't even have. They're not actually in the book. There's a little bit in there about it, Solomon, of course. But he, there's a whole freaking book on Solomon, you know. couple, actually. And you know what he does in those books? You know what Solomon's doing in those books, dude? He's fighting and imprisoning demons. It's the one of the That's coolest cool. books in the Bible ever. No, it's badass, dude. He's just taking it, to, taking him to task, dude. It's so such an interesting, fun book, but it's not in the Bible. It's weird because that actually one, is like one, one of the one of the more interesting stories that I that I always liked was uh, was what's his name uh, Elijah when he was out there uh, challenging all the uh, the other priests and everything. Yeah. The best stuff. Why take stuff like that out? Yeah, no, it's a good point. In the book of Enoch, of actually three books of Enoch, uh, those are origin stories, right? And they're they're talking about giants and wars and angels and all you know spaceships and all kind of stuff like that. It's really cool. It's a cool, fun book for a modern reader. Uh, and and of course, it's become very popular. I, I showed a picture of it earlier. Uh, but the book of Enoch has become quite the uh, trendsetter these days because it's fun. It's an interesting story. Uh, but Enoch is so hot right now. He is hot right now, dude. He really is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but it, it is interesting how they made a the decision. And what I'd like to do is take a few TFTs and talk about why those decisions were made and what was left out. That's what I'd like to focus on and where things came from. Now, uh, Thundero's not here right now. Uh, I, I know he had some things he wanted to talk about specifically, but that's all right. We'll do it next week. Uh, but uh, just as a closing, as, a, as kind of a, a, not a closing, but just to, to my little presentation here, um, uh, just to, uh, to show you uh, all these stories, they're coming from much older versions. And the cool thing about it is that we do have the older versions of these stories. We have them. They're still here. And, and uh, uh, we don't know where the original original stories come from. Uh, we do know that a lot of the stories we have, uh, particularly with things like with the Anunnaki stories, for instance, uh, the Mesopotamian ones, uh, we know that the, those were found on tablets. And at the top of the tablets, it says this was a copy of a copy from uh, so-and-so's library from uh, before the flood. Right, they actually will say stuff like that on these tablets, ancient tablets they found, because uh, that's how they would uh, organize their libraries, right? Um, and uh, so we don't even know where the original stories come from, but we know they're at least minimal 12, 13, 14,000 years old, if not much older. And we do have some of the Egyptian versions, which do give us better dates, and they say that the golden age where a lot of these stories took place in was 40,000 years ago. Now, of course, you know, the uh, average anthropologist would say, oh, that's just stories. Uh, but, you know, that's how they do. Uh, nevertheless, so if I wanted to if I wanted to go and look up uh, these books mm -hmm. and, and find them and read them. Yeah. Where would I go? Is there a site that I can go to on the Internet? Where I Absolutely. Can read these books? Sure. Just type in the Apocrypha or the Book of Enoch. Or the Gnostics, and you can have yourself some fun and read away. The Gnostics, to, just to give you a straight up, uh, the Gnostics sounded, uh, if you read the books, they sounded like they were a bunch of hippies on acid, though. Uh oh. Yeah, there's a I lot like of hippies. spiritual stuff flying through space, and uh, there's I a lot of read that. about ancient beatniks. 
Yeah, that's they were. They were really ancient beatniks. Uh, now, some of the ones that are official uh, 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 apocrypha here, which uh, you see on the screen right now, uh, for instance, the Wisdom of Solomon, which is the book I was talking about, uh, these have a lot more history stuff, the kind of stuff that uh, John probably liked uh, in here, the Book of Enoch. That's why I put these up here. The Gnostics are are much more spiritual. Uh, to be uh, to be honest with yeah, you, they're much. You know more, what I like. This. I do. Uh, they're much more Indian, John. They have that what? Eastern philosophy. Yeah. Uh, that's the interesting oh. thing about Christianity, dude. I think people don't catch uh, is uh, Christianity is a mix of the old with the new at that time the newer Eastern ideas of spirituality and 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 you know not gods, just the spirit of the universe itself. Uh, Christianity is is a, a, the amazing synthesis of those two concepts, uh, and I, most people don't get it because basically, if you're a Christian, you believe in baby Jesus, well then you're a Buddhist. Because that's who he mm -hmm. is. It now, is. Let me ask you, Chester. Mm -hmm. Do you but do you believe in a creator? Do I believe in a creator? Well, I think that scientifically, as far as the limited amount of science we do have, um, that um, there clearly seems to be some manner of intelligent design. I think that's quite obvious. Um, but I don't believe that whatever intelligence might be behind the structure of the universe or what have you, I don't think it has anything to do with our daily lives. Uh, I don't think it even acknowledges our existence. It might not even be capable of such things, even if, if it's an it. Um, so I do believe there is an intelligence involved in all of it. Uh, but I don't think there's a, a there's a man sitting up on a cloud looking at you every day and, and watching everything little thing you do. I, I don't believe that, no. Okay. You? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. But I think there's definitely some, there seems to be some kind of intelligence behind everything. It, it seems pretty fair. Uh, particularly when you get into like studying DNA and stuff like that. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty heady stuff, man. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, thing, like, I, I do believe in a uh, that there was some sort of creator or creative force intelligently. Uh, but yeah, as far as uh, day to day stuff, I'm still on the fence about it. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I'm the same. Uh, and we do have a lot of stories from every culture in the world. Uh, and, and you got to understand, um, all the cultures on the on the planet uh, seem to agree. So either everyone came from one central place, which is possible, uh, or they all had similar experiences. And what I think is, when you look at the stories, especially the older versions of them, the uh, and I even have it set up here because we're looking at uh, El, or uh, uh, of course uh, Anu, uh, and of course the Anu Naki, uh, these fellas here. Now, uh, if you read the oldest stories of them, which are the same stories you read in the Bible, by the way. They're 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 all very uni universal. I don't uh, think this photograph is very accurate. I think it's super accurate. I love it. Uh, it's a good. Uh, I don't know. Is this piece of art, or do they just take a picture and like color over it? What do you think? This is this is probably a hand drawn image they found on a scroll that they just colored. That's that's there. You go. That's perfect. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> the. Uh, uh, these stories that we're reading in the Bible, that you have older versions of them, and then they have older versions of it, etc., etc. Uh, and it all comes down to these fellas. And the oldest version you read of it, John, these guys are not gods. They never refer to themselves as God. They live a very long time, but they do die. They do age. Um, and uh, uh, and I've said several times how interesting the old stories are in the fact that they're very science fictiony. Where is no, gotta, I got I got to I got to try to uh I don't want to sound like a jerk or anything but mm -hmm. I I do need you to kind of back up a little bit sure because you you brought in the Anunnaki and you show this image but I'm a I'm a lay person yeah I, I don't know what these people are never heard of them Oh, okay, okay. I I just was kind of uh, mentioning offhand because of the origin of it. I'm not uh, who like are these Joe guys? in the chat, you know, who's uh <clears throat> telling you you're wrong, you know. I I just don't know. Well, that's fine. He can tell me I'm wrong all, all he like. Uh, but um, uh, who are these guys? Well, um, these are the uh, the original creator beings. Uh, now, in the original stories, we have uh, the the people of ancient Mesopotamia. Uh, they believed that in their writings that uh, these beings came from another place, 
wherever that may be. But then again, all gods are from someplace else, right? Uh, but they came from another place, uh, and they came here specifically looking for resources and gold. That's why they were here. That's their stated reason. Okay, so what you're saying is that the oldest, if you go back as far as we are capable of going back yeah. in recorded history, the oldest stories of creators are of these characters called the Anunnaki. Yes, this, this is, is the oldest ones we have. That. That's right, yeah. Um, and, of course, the stories of Solomon, uh, uh, we have almost identical stories, but they're the, they're the uh, adventures of Adad, which is one of these godlike you know, beings, right? Um, uh, and it was that which is interesting unto itself if you want to read some of that stuff. Uh, but uh, these guys were working, and it seems like they did. They weren't really good at getting from where they where they live to here. They they weren't. They were not. They were kind of inept at it, and they so they couldn't get a lot of themselves over here. It was they were having a difficult time. Uh, but they really really needed these resources. They said that they needed it desperately because uh, they're. I know it's weird, but their atmosphere uh, was dying, uh, and they didn't have enough heat, so they wanted to put, they wanted to suspend uh, a gold in atomic form in the in their atmosphere, so that it would reflect the volcanic, uh, the lessening volcanic nature of the planet, therefore keep the planet warm. That was their reason for being here. So they weren't just hunting for gold because they were greed, greedy. They were hunting for gold because they needed to save their lives. That was the intention, right? Uh, and they. And they banged at it for quite a while, but first they tried to take it out of the oceans. That didn't work. Then they tried to mine, but that was really difficult. And they were just having a lot of trouble. And their workers who were digging in the mines, they were really complaining. And they kind of like had a worker strike. And they were trying to figure out what to do. And uh, one of the members, who seemed to be kind of like a scientist type, uh, he said, well, you know, I've been studying the animals on this planet, and I think there's this kind of... You know, uh, uh, there's this kind of thing that's similar to us that I can adjust uh, and make a make a slave for us uh, to do the work. And they had a big argument about that because the interesting thing about these gods, as they became called later with Zeus and stuff, um, they had their own god. They believed in the intelligent force. They uh, they were religious. And uh, half of them were like, nah, 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 we shouldn't be messing with this stuff. We, we, used to, we did something like this before, and we have laws. We can't be doing that, yada, yada, yada. They had a big argument. Uh, and then they had the, the other side was like, yeah, we're desperate. We need it. In the end, the king, this fella here you see on the screen, he's like, well, we don't have much choice. Do it. So he did. And it took him a while, and he had to go through fair, uh, uh, various iterations. But eventually he did create this servitor uh, race to help them dig and do the things they wanted. But as time went by, and I, maybe they, they started being able to kind of solve their problem a little bit, they started, well, well you know, we got them. Why don't we use them in our, in our fields for farming? You know, we don't, uh, so we don't have to do labor. Uh, you know, I'd love to have one in my house cleaning and stuff and, and cooking, so I don't have to do it. And it kind of degraded into this. Uh, and except, you know, the stories go on and on and on. And like I said, you've read these stories. Thing. This huh? is the origin story of how uh, the Mexican people became the first human race, right? It is. That is right. That is exactly <laughs> right. Uh, but uh, the the interesting thing about it is, uh, you know, a lot of the adventures of these godlike beings are the stories that you read in the Bible. They're, you know, the... Uh, you know, this king trying to get over on that king or uh, uh, the Tower of Babel. The the, uh, and a lot of them, the older versions, the older uh, uh, Mesopotamian versions are far more interesting than the watered down generic Bible versions. Like the Tower of Babel now, me... story, for instance, is far more interesting. Okay, one, real quick, though, real quick, though. And I want to and I want to I want to ask you something. Yeah, I want I want to ask for your. <sighs> I want to ask you to be truthful with me. Yeah. As a friend. Yeah. Because when I asked earlier about where could I go and find these uh, these stories. Yeah. Right. I'm actually going to go read those stories, Chester. You should. Dude. But uh, I should. But I'm probably not going to. Um, so what I'm asking you, as a friend, yeah, you care about me at all? Do you think um, that this is? I mean. As far back as there is recorded history, am I? Am I? Are you giving me a hundred percent truths? Um, my honest opinion, from everything I've read and studied, and understand, I've I come from an academic background, uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and it took me a while to, now I was a little bit uppity in the beginning anyway, uh, but it did take me a while to break that thinking and allow myself to be completely open-minded. That's one of the problems with the education system, John. They really do brainwash you. It's, a, it's an actual right. thing. Uh, but uh, I've come to the point now that I'm, I'm, I'm happy enough to say that I think that it is potentially true that uh, some uh, foreign invasive species, uh, whether it be from the planet, transdimensional, another planet, wherever it came from, maybe it was just another civilization here that got a hold and it was way ahead of everybody. Oh, hold uh, on, hold on. That's, that, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not asking whether or not you, you believe it's true or that actually oh. happened. Um, I'll probably glean that from the, this conversation. But what I'm asking is, are you giving me from the uh, accumulated knowledge that you've had through your studies and you, you love this stuff? This is your kind of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> is what you're giving me 100 percent what you believe to be the uh, official, most uh, up to date, reliable source on this information. Like, I don't know if it's yeah. true. I don't care if it's true really, but is this the actual story of how it went down? It's the most like, accurate information we have at this time. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it is. All right. That's all. That's yeah. all. Now, um, there are some stories that are far more supernatural in nature, far more gar godlike and spirit like, uh, but those kind of stories didn't come around until much later. Uh, they really didn't. Uh, you see the stories of these uh, uh, that just kind of go on through the ages, and they they become more and more uh, uh, godlike. They become more and more supernatural, all the way up to modern time, where now it's this god snaps its finger and creates a universe type of thing. It evolved. It evolved. Um, and it became far more spiritual and intellectual. Now, you could say, well, humans were just more primitive at that time. They couldn't come up with more uh, deep, uh, you know, deeper concepts. So it was very simplistic. Uh, and, and then uh, as time went by, they, uh, our, our fantasy mind evolved. Eh, that's fair enough. Uh, that's fair enough. I can I can take that. The problem is along the way, if you you know, this is a different conversation, but when you get into all the things that they understood and knew that they shouldn't have known, you know, particularly cosmological things, uh, this now you start to say, well, all right, now we need to think about it a little bit. But I, that's not the conversation I was having. I didn't want to get into the Anunnaki thing. I just want to get into the fact that the stories you're reading in the Bible are their stories. It's their heroic adventures, their actions. It's the things they did. Many times when you read the Bible, uh, this, uh, you know, particularly if you go back and read the Septuagint, which is a more accurate version of it, um, uh, what, what you're seeing is uh, bec it, 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 you're seeing different times where it says God or I am, it's actually a different, you know, air quote, God that's talking or doing something. It's not the same one. And the reason for that was when the, the Jewish hierarchy was under uh, uh, Babylonian imprisonment, imprisonment um, they, this is when they actually put the, the, the complete Torah together. That's when it became the Torah was during their uh, captivity in Babylon. And uh, they did several things uh, during their captivity, one of which is starting to cut, cut the skin off the tip of their dicks, you know, because, you know, sorry, God, come back to us, please. Right. But uh, whatever. Uh, but uh, when they, they had to hide it because people like to say that the Jews were or not, well, excuse me, the, 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 the Hebrew were the first monotheistic people. They were not. That is not even close to being true. There are many examples of monotheistics going back way before that. Uh, but at that time, the Babylonians, although they did have a kind of a, an acknowledgement of the other gods, uh, they had one god, and his name was Marduk. And uh, you better not talk about multiple gods, because the, the, the Hebrews, before their time in Babylon, they did have multiple gods in their story, because they are different stories from different gods' point of view, uh, doing different adventures and different things. Uh, but during that time, they, they were under you know har harsh penalty. So the Torah that you have today, or the Old Testament, was written to subterfuge or obfuscate um, the uh, 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 the acknowledgement of multiple gods. And that's why they only say God or I am. They don't name anything. It's intentionally done because they were under imprisonment. Uh, and that's where we've come to today. And people don't want to take that into account. In, in all honesty, we should be reading older versions of it, especially if you're a religious person, because the person who wrote the book, for whatever age it's in, should not be as important as the faith itself. Right? Right. Right. So. <clears throat> well, well, you know, that, that brings us to today. But 
Let's go back to this picture. I want to hear about this picture. I want to hear. I want to hear this story. That is Anu. This is Anu, and this is the earliest recorded uh, uh, leader, god, god, king, emperor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, because a lot of the oldest stuff we have are saying that they're a copy of something from a library that was before the the flood, the deluge, right? Um, and that's the oldest written stuff we have. Now, some scholars would say, well, they were just being fantasyful and they just wrote it themselves and it's not actually from them. And it's like, well, why does that have to be true? Why is it always a matter of convenience when it comes to anthropologists or archaeologists? I, I, I can't stand it. Uh, if you're going to take what they'll they'll take a piece out of a story and say, well, that's very interesting. And that gives us some insight. But then they'll throw the rest of the story away. Now, if they wrote a whole freaking library of books, a whole section of their library, and it's all supposed to be anti-diluvian and they mark it very clearly on their tablet by professional scribes who work for kings and merchants and other powerful people. Why would it be all just in jest? Why? It doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm a type of person, like some others, that would prefer to take them at face value. All right, well, here's their story. They're saying this is what's what, so let's see what we can glean from it. That's how I'll look at it. I certainly don't throw it away for no reason. Um, uh, But, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, like I said, I want to get into more depths of how these things came to be where they are today. I'd like to make some comparisons between, a say, a Bible story and an older version of it. And there are many to mm. many you can do. Maybe I'll pick something obscure. Mm-hmm. But let me come off this picture and come back over to the other side with these guys real quick. And Thundero's back. Hi, Thundero. Thundero. back. Yeah, he, I am he was back. chomping at the bit to be a part of this conversation. <laughs> I had to rush my wife over to her office. There was the alarm was going off, so I went with like her. Roll, like a roll, like a roll, baby. But yeah. But yes, I am back. And Chester we're, we're, how uh, how how what did I miss basically? I, I've been here for probably about I don't know fifteen minutes now. Did I miss anything? Any great huge revelations from from old Chester over here? Uh, no. Uh, what what uh, Chester is kind of? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go. No, you please do recap me. I'm saying yeah, what Chester has kind of gone through so far is just the the Bible, what it is, what it means. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, just the, the the word itself, and then kind of where the stories coming are coming from from the Bible, and he kind of did a little uh, backtracking, you know, uh, from where we are today, uh, uh, further and further back into history, until we get to the earliest recorded stories that are you know Bible related, and it comes to this person here, and he gave a little bit of a background of the Anunnaki and what they are and what their origins are. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. See, I what I was gonna do. I don't know if we have time. Do we have time, Chester? Or do you gotta go? Uh, no, I have. Uh, I have some time. Yeah. Okay. I am going to use one of the gospels to to not disprove, but to strongly weaken the case that the Bible itself is the quote unquote, as Paul calls it, the Word of God. Oh. It is absolutely not. Um, I, I'm sorry to break that to Christians, but the book that you read was created by Roman magistrates to control you. Yeah, no, that's, that's the truth. Oh, hold on, and, hold on a second. Boop, boop, boop. Atheist alert. Atheist <laughs> alert. Boop, boop. Okay, go ahead. No, I'm not actually. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Word of God. The Bible oh, explicitly says this. Oh. Yes, the Bible explicitly says this repeatedly. All throughout it, except for when Paul, some for some reason, decides to declare that his word is is also the word of God, which is he ridiculous. Drunk. He probably uh, was drunk, dude. Yeah. Uh, John chapter one, the last gospel of the four gospels, and in my in my opinion, the most important of the gospels, um, explicitly states that Jesus is the word of God. You can read it in any translation you want, and all of them say the same thing. This is re- this is once again repeated. There's a few different times, but it's repeated in Revelation, and the other book by a John, which is also an incredibly important book, probably the most important book besides the Gospels. And in there, when Jesus returns, one of his names, and it's written on his thigh, is the Word of God. That is his name. He is the Word of God. What that means is, is that nothing else supersedes the words of Jesus Christ in the scripture, in the Bible, or in the religion. At least it shouldn't. That's a sucking. Jesus Christ 
is the Word of God. The Word is God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh, and from Him all life comes. Just as we know uh, when you read the creation story, it we we've canonized it that God spoke things into existence. No, technically He sung them into existence, but still He used words to bring them into existence. Jesus is the word of God. You do not need, like I saw some people in the chat arguing about different prophets and this and that and different parts of the Bible. It's all irrelevant. Most of the Bible should not be canonized. If you're a true believer of Jesus Christ, you should follow Jesus Christ. Period. You don't need the books to do that for you. At least not all the ones that don't have him directly as the main character. Um, because he is the word of God. He is the path to righteousness. According to him and according to every other instance in the Bible that has prophecy or that is spoken directly by God himself, allegedly. The words are supposedly written by a prophet from God directly. Not just recanting things that happened to Paul or Paul's opinion on certain you know, theological positions or whatever, which is basically what the letters are. The, the, the uh, most of the New Testament is just a bunch of letters that Paul wrote to different churches yeah. and then other apostles as well. I've never, even when I was heavily in the church, never understood why those were considered the word of God, other than the fact that Paul claimed they were. That's the only reason I can think of, because there's no, I know now that it's because of the Council of Nicaea and the long history and blah, blah. But if you actually read the Bible and you take things that they say about God and Jesus seriously, maybe not literally, because how can Jesus be word? That doesn't make sense. But you take them seriously, then you understand that the council itself was, in my opinion, the enemy of, of God, or not the enemy of God, but the enemy of man, trying to corrupt our very ability to understand uh, the spiritual world. Because the fact that, like I've said on here before, people say, well, the Bible's the word of God. Which Bible? Which one? Which translation? Which, which uh, sect has the right one? Because they all use different ones. The Catholics is different from the Protestant. The Protestant is different from the Orthodox. I have never seen a Coptic Bible, but I have a feeling it's probably different than all the others. Now, it's not like radically different by and large. No, the, the Coptic the one basic is. is the Coptic. I've never seen it, so I don't know. But the other ones are basically the same with a few alterations, extra books, and what have you. But again, you can't say the Bible is the word of God when there's like 400 different versions of the thing. That doesn't make any sense. At least the Muslims largely have this correct in that their book, while there are some differ differentiations between the sects, it's pretty well the same and has been forever, or at least a long time. Um, well, the Bible changes every other five years. There's a new translation, it seems like. Yeah. And it'll change. It doesn't change major things usually, but it'll change little things here or there. I don't like that, personally. If I'm going to put my faith in something, I'm going to put it into an entity, not a book. And Jesus Christ is an entity, and he absolutely is the Savior of the world, and he is the Word of God, not the Bible. So you don't need to follow a book verbatim to be a follower of Christ. The people of that time didn't have these books. They had people who told them what supposedly the law of God was. Jesus himself rebuked that repeatedly throughout his entire life because he is the word of God. He is the one through which all life in, in the creation of the universe flows. Why do I say that? Because the Bible says that. Because John, when he's talking about the word of God, if you just go read John chapter 1, not going to recite it here, but if you go read it, he says that all things come from him, come from the word of God, which is Jesus Christ, because the word was made flesh. That is what it says, and that's talking obviously about Jesus, and that he would be able to set aside people, if salvation as Christians understand it, set aside people to become like, like him, like God. Um, there is no reason for people to obsess over, and this is the reason why there's so many Christian sects is largely because of the minutia, because there's so many books in the Bible, some of which, you know, most people in America, we consider the 66 books largely to be, that's the Bible, right? The Protestant Bible, that's the one. That's the one that they got that one right. That one's not messed up at all. If you go over to like Eastern Europe, where it's a more orthodox 
situation going on, Far Eastern Europe and Russia and whatnot. And I think they have like 72 books in their Bible, I believe is the number. I'd have to check. But it's, it's more than 66. And they would never can even remotely consider the 66 being enough. Um, when you get to the point where a, a lot of Christians do this, and I know this from firsthand experience, so please, it's Christians, don't lie to way. me. Oh, 81. I'm sorry. That's even more than I thought. Please don't lie to yourself and to me and pretend that you don't. A lot of Christians lean on their Bible and their that that book in their what they call their faith they use it as a crutch because they don't want to think about the stuff critically not all of them a lot of them don't do this but a lot do they hide behind their faith and usually when they're doing that they're not hiding with the words of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ was many things but he was not a coward absolutely was not if you take no matter what story you want to take from him whether it's the historical account which we are pretty sure is probably where it was inspired by or the biblical account, either way, he was standing up to authority. He wasn't afraid. He stood up and, and tried to do what was right. And the fact that this many Christians will take the word of Paul, who I personally believe that Paul was absolutely an agent of the Roman Empire until he was executed by the Roman Empire and was sent in to try and disrupt the cult because uh, it was causing them trouble and they didn't want that trouble. Well, Saul was a um, bru uh, uh, bureaucrat. Yes, he was. Yes, I, I believe he was his whole life. I don't believe his ridiculous story that <laughs> that he was walking road. down the road. Yeah, he was walking down the road and Jesus just showed up in the sky to him and asked him why he persecutes him. And then he went blind for three days until he met the right guy. And then his eyes just started working. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. That is a little silly. <laughs> That's a little far even for the Bible. Could it have happened? Maybe. But I don't believe somebody who tells me that much of a ridiculous story with nothing to corroborate it except for his word. Yeah. Especially when that person was literally a murderer, a psychopathic murderer for the Roman state and killed probably hundreds, if not thousands of Christians. Oh, he certainly did. That is true. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I just interject real quick to co cover a couple yeah. of the chat things if I could? Um, uh, yes, uh, the uh, 1611 uh, King James book had the uh, additional 15 books of the Apocrypha, which is why yep. uh, the Eastern Church still has 81 instead of 66. Uh, they're young uh, B. And uh, um, uh, he also said, God gave uh, the Torah to Moses. The rest is inspired. Well, actually, he gave him 30 commandments. Uh, Moses got mad, threw them down, broke them, then went back and, got, and he came back with 10. So I don't yep. know. I don't know what happened there. Something happened. Maybe he couldn't talk to God again, and he's, damn it, I can only remember 10. And he chipped He just in. gave him the shorthand this time. Yeah. He's like, all right, listen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happened with that. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, no, he didn't give him the Torah. Uh, uh, oh, you could say the Torah isn't. Well, no, you can't even say the Torah isn't spy because it's not. It's histories. That's what it is. It's histories. Uh, the Ten Commandments were given by God, supposedly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, go ahead. I have long been an advocate. Uh, like I said, I still believe in Jesus Christ. I still consider him my savior. My faith is in him, not a book. Um, I've long been an advocate of a new council of some sort. Get rid of the fluff. There's a lot of fluff in the Bible that just simply has no purpose other than because people think it's righteous and holy, we have to keep it. Um, anything that doesn't contain prophecy, in my opinion, should be decanonized. And anything that isn't directly clearly directly coming from Jesus or someone who literally was there when it happened, like the Gospels, I don't have any, I just, I don't see the point of that being canon. That just seems like, I mean, it's, it's in a thousand, let's say a thousand years from now, somebody takes a bunch of letters Billy Graham wrote and decided those should be scripture. Oh, that's exactly uh, why good are good comparison. Uh, that's what, yeah, that's what Paul's stuff is. And a lot of the apostles stuff is, it's just, it, to me, it's, it's always been silly that it's considered holy word i'm not saying it should be thrown away and burned we can still use it but it shouldn't be considered scripture in my in my opinion that's just my opinion i haven't seen i've talked to plenty of people including theologians on this because i used to be heavy into that and then none of them have a real good answer they just don't they say things like uh it doesn't contradict other parts so that's why it's in uh they'll say things like somebody said in the chat well why would god let that happen why wouldn't he let that happen? The whole point of this world is a test. You don't think he's going to test you on what is or is not his word? Of course he is. Yeah. Of course he's going to do that. 
I would if I was him. That makes perfect sense. Well, you know, Thunder, what might be interesting next week because I do, I, I would like to take a few TFTs and kind of, uh, you know, suss some of this out, take a look at it, and get some opinions. Maybe next week we should simply talk about Saul and maybe Josephus as well. That would probably be a good connection, and look at who is Saul. Uh, who, mm. who was he? Where does he come from? How is he affected? How did Josephus come into the the picture? Uh, maybe look at mm. that actual, just focusing on that one dude, because he's important. The whole damn religion yep. was created off of his uh, his back, and he is the ultimate saint when it comes down to it for the Catholics, right? And, 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 mm-hmm. and another quick point, too. I'm curious, John, because, you know, we're all Americans here, but... Uh, I know that my Irish heritage, uh, uh, because I grew up in my mom's family, my dad's family is, you know, the the, the, the Strathclyde Norwegians, but I grew up in my mom's family and they're all about the Irishness. And uh, so a lot of the Irish stories and Irish culture is part of me. It's part of my upbringing, as well as being an American. Uh, they're both part of me. Now, I don't know uh, your upbringing. I don't know if you had much involvement with your uh, uh, the, the part of you that is Mexican. Uh, uh, so I don't really know how much of that is part of you. Uh, but um, I'm curious because the, the, the Latino people in particular are rabidly Catholic. Uh, how, how did that affect you growing up? Uh, it didn't. It didn't really much. The thing is, I'm very much removed from the uh, okay Mexico side. I'm I'm very American. I'm 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 on most on both sides. I'm sixth generation, I at see. least. Um, and actually, a lot of a lot of my people weren't from Mexico. They were just born native Californians. I see. Yeah, no, it depends on the person. A lot of people, I think, in America are like that. They don't really have any of the old world culture touching on them and and maybe one of the reasons why because i'm i'm mixed race in essence right uh my mom's uh family are pure irish there it's it's shocking how they can they're you know literally come from the allens on the mayflower that's how long they've been in america but they don't have any mixing in them i don't know how the hell that happens uh my dad's side being norwegian and those things are very different and um uh but uh, i grew up in an irish family and it was it was it was important so I have a lot of that old world culture in me. And I know there's a lot of Americans who don't have it at all. They're just American, you know? Yeah, that, that is what I am. Like, I, I, like realistically, um, I have one grandparent <clears throat> whose, whose mother was from Mexico. Everybody else is from here before it was even in America, you know? Ah, I see. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so uh, what about you, Thundera? Uh, what, what's your... Uh, your non-American cultural aspects of your upbringing. Are there any? Oh, I'm, uh, well, I guess the European, but it's way back. Like, it, there really isn't any. I, I'm pre- my family's just, yeah. just just Midwestern Americans, largely. Uh, like, like we're, you know, Germanic. We're all, my on my father's side, Austrian, Swiss. But even the German, you know, because there's like German-American festivals and all that stuff, we were never really involved in it. Never just just didn't it, just had no interest in it. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, I, I think my uh, maybe my family is more unique, I guess, uh, because my they're, they're not. I wouldn't. You don't know if I want to use the word. Well, I think I think but... some of it is uh, is New England. I think that's really yeah, maybe. there's still there seems to be people from that area have a real strong tie to the old world to Europe still in in that regard, like their heritage. They really take pride in it and stuff. Whereas people in the Midwest. Lisa, in my experience, except for maybe the Polish uh, Americans, don't really have that as much. Well, and I think part of it comes down to because my family's kind of been interbreeding with uh, the Conleys, the Allens, the Balls, the Whites. They've been kind of interbreeding with each other for hundreds of years. Uh, and we did have some influx of uh, Portuguese people, uh, but they stayed more up north and toward the cities, not down in the south where I'm from. Um, and we've had a couple of influxes, like with Italians and stuff, but they, they, they didn't seem to intermix much. They, they kept them, they get along well, but they didn't seem to marry each other very much, I guess. Uh, may, and that might be, ha- have, I think that has something to do with it. But, but anyway, um, uh, you, you know, I'm just curious yeah, I'm just gonna, about. I'm going to try to trace his lineage back to this, uh, this handsome Anunnaki guy. <laughs> Well, uh, that would be a lot easier with my dad's family than my mom's. 
um, because the uh, uh, the Celtic people, and I'm, I mean the actual, uh, uh, you know, the Celtic, uh, the uh, you know, the Gallic uh, Celts, um, they have been in in uh, in situ for a very long time. They have been up there an incredibly long time. Uh, whereas my, my dad's family, you know, Busby, my name is Busby, which I know sounds like a funny name. Uh, but if you understand the, uh, the etymology of the name, it, it shows you that it's actually very, quite foreign. Uh, Buzz or Bushibi or, or, or Bushé means, uh, simply forest and B or Bay, uh, is a title that's been, uh, around since Egyptian time. Uh, and it was given to uh, people, families that would run the affairs of the royals. Uh, so like barons or lords or stuff like that. There are people that would manage their, their lands and be in charge. Uh, so the bay, anybody you, you meet in your life who has a bee, bay, by, whatever at the end of their name, those are, that, that's really quite ancient. And it's, like I said, it's coming from Mesopotamia, Egypt area. That's how old it is. So, uh, therefore, somehow, I don't know, I have no idea how it happened, but uh, somehow or another, my family, if you can, if I could possibly trace it back, is coming from probably somewhere in the Middle East originally. Um, as far as that goes, even though they're staunchly Norwegian, the name itself tells you that now that those people are were put in charge of something, right? Uh, because of that end title, so my 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 dad's family, my my namesake, uh, it would be more interesting to try to trace back to these people. But the uh, the Conleys, no, no way, dude. They they're just a bunch of barbarian primitive Neanderthals running around the freaking woods, killing each other over cows. I said it. Sorry. <laughs> oh. Uh, Conleys can interbreed with this Allen anytime. Uh, Howell says, <laughs> "Sweet." Uh, you're talking <laughs> about my cousin, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, no. <laughs> of course, the names have, have moved across the country in various ways. I've actually met in my life a black dude named Busby. I was like, "Wow, how'd that happen?" And he was black, black too. Was he also Ch named Chester? Because that would be hilarious. No, no. His name was Bernard. Bernard Busby. Yeah, yeah. That's a uh, name. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, my da my mom's family certainly never held any slaves. Uh, uh, we know that 100%. My dad's family did come over after the uh, King James betrayal uh, and owned a lot of property in Virginia. They were tobacco farmers, and they ended up uh, kind of separating their families, see if they could uh, increase their fortunes. Uh, and I come from the southern migration of them who started uh, cattle ranching and stuff. Uh, so it's a, it's a fair chance that my early families, particularly in Virginia, might have held, held slaves. So it could just simply be a slave name. I don't know. It's very interesting. Yeah. I don't know either. What does that have to do with this guy and his story? <laughs> Well, it, because you asked if I could trace my lineage back to uh, this fellow right here. And I, uh, uh, probably I did not, not ask that. I said, we better move on or Chester's going to try to trace it. <laughs> no, fair enough. I did. I did. I ha it happened. Um, and now Young is talking about the redheaded mummies found in America. That's a different conversation, but it is a cool one. Uh, but I think next week, uh, I, I agree with uh, uh, Thundero. Uh, let's talk about Saul next week. Let's have a shot no. at it. Why old not? Apostle, the old Apostle Paul, as, as most modern Christians would call him. You see, I refuse to call him that. You, you notice that. Good. Yeah, thank Good. You. That, that is a huge problem. It, in all honesty, this is one of the things that uh, bugged me when I, was when I was younger and going to church fairly regularly. Uh, Christians claim to follow, be followers of Jesus, but a whole lot of them seem to be Paulites. They, it, it's, it's weird, man. Like... Jesus is supposed to be, you know, your God, right? He's the he's the big cheese, the head honcho. Mm -hmm. But they, I, I would go to church, and more often than not, they would be preaching out of one of Paul or one of the other apostles' writings instead of, you know, one of the Gospels or something that supposedly came right from Jesus directly. Uh, it, it just always bugged me. And I, I could never understand why, and I'd ask questions to, you know, pastors and whatnot, uh, about certain different aspects, things that I saw as contradictory or just didn't quite make sense. Because when you look at it from a certain angle, it looks like they're putting Paul 
at a much higher station than he should be. And I never quite understood it. I, I get it now. It's just what they've been taught. So they're just teaching you what they've been taught. But I, I do think, like I said earlier, I do think uh, he was absolutely still an agent of the state the whole his whole life. Yeah. Well, let's up into his alleged it. death. I think we yeah. should look. I think it'd be fun to take a look at. It. I know John will love it. It, it just, he'll be all up on it. Oh, well, you yeah. see, I'm I'm making a little I'm making a little uh, tree here on like a clip studio page, mm-hmm. and I have at the very top uh, uh, Anunnaki as earliest recorded stories, and I want to continue this tree. I don't know how I'm going to fit Paul into this tree. You, you got to work it out. You got to work because he's <laughs> definitely in there. Uh, but uh, you know, the, actually, the funny thing uh, uh, um, I I find when you take a look at the uh, just innumerable. Uh, 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 Protestant sects that you have, <laughs> because they are mm. it just the numbers. There's 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 hundreds, if not thousands, of them. Um, yeah. Uh, you know the funny thing you're talking about who they worship and stuff. Uh, if you pay attention to a lot of it, uh, it it's very odd to me because a lot of them seem to be actually focusing more uh, and almost as if they worship Apollyon. Now Apollyon, uh, uh, of course, is uh, 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 Apollo, right? Uh, but uh, yeah. it, it's also can be said as Abaddon, and it can also be said as, you know, as Modius. Yes. Um, yeah, I know. I agree with you. They also, there's a lot of them, especially American ones, who have this weird uh, Zionism that isn't just Zionism, but it's it's basically a worship of Israel itself. Yeah, and you'll see it around. You'll see some of these mega churches, and all, they'll they'll talk about Israel like it's some holy thing. I mean, I know we call it the Holy Land, but it's not a holy place in so far as like God is there or something. Like it's not like he's sitting in Israel just chilling. Um, it, it's it's a strange thing, and it also seems to be the places largely that are Paul Paul like Paul. Very Paul centric, let's put it that way. Or, or the apostles seem to have a more uh, central role than they should. It's it's a strange phenomenon, old American Christianity. It's a very weird thing to watch. Like the left obviously hates Christianity. Like there's no question. I don't think anybody could dispute that. Yeah, they do. Um, yeah. And however, some of their criticisms are valid when it comes to evangelicals in America. And I was one most of my life. Uh, because they do have these weird cult-like mentality in a lot of these, these big churches. And it's strange to me because, you know, like a lot of religions, they don't want you to question too much. I used to get yelled at all the time for questioning too much, but I just, it's just an odd thing. It's an odd thing that, that American Christianity has become at least the evangelical side, where they've become this weird pseudo-Israel cult mixed with a little bit of Jesus and a lot of Paul. It would be, it'd be I'd like to, I might actually do that. I might do a deep dive onto it and just break that down because I know when some of it started, uh, some of it started back in the 30s and then really picked up after World War II. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a big movement by pro-Zionists to infiltrate American churches to preach Zionism. The only reason I know that's an absolute fact is because the pastor of the church I went to told me he was approached by pro-Zionist groups to preach heavy Zionism and that oh, they yeah. would donate to the church and stuff like that. And he said, no, I'm going to preach the Bible. Thank you. Um, but there was also a movement. It's a very strange thing. Our government pretends like they don't care about churches but they spend a lot of time trying to subvert them. They do. Because there was a big movement, a big movement for a long time. They might even still be doing it. I don't know. Where they would send through uh, non-government organizations, NGOs, send people to tell them, basically these preachers, not to preach anti-government sentiments at all. Like nothing. You're not allowed to just... Just be real positive, upbeat, blah, 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 blah. There's even a... Uh, I can't remember the number of the the or operation or whatever but there is an operation that the government has been engaged in since the 60s that is quite literally taken from hitler's playbook again another thing what a surprise they took from hitler and where it's basically if if a serious crisis happens in the country a serious one happens in the country not not like we've been but like something that's genuinely threatening to the entirety of the country um they will not preach against government action Many of these churches have signed on in secret to this, 
to keep the government from basically messing with them because the government can because their tax exempt status while is pretty well defined in law we we've seen what our government can do when they really want to get you they don't really care about the law oh, yeah, they're gonna no, get you <laughs> that's fair enough yeah we definitely seen that um you know but there's do... a, my point is is there's a lot of weird stuff going on in american christianity we could almost do a whole tft just on evangelical christianity in america i think because there's maybe, weird stuff maybe we should uh, I think next week uh, I definitely go talk about Saul. You can talk about that if you'd like, or we could just do a whole show on it. Um, just to kind of uh, you you mentioned Jerusalem real quick, and I <coughs> just going to throw something out with that if I could, because uh, I knew mm. I do need to wrap this up. Uh, but um, uh, the, the the name itself is very interesting, uh, Jerusalem, uh, and of course, uh, well, if you if you understand what that means, it means to throw God up. Is what the with the translation, the etymology of it. Uh, but if you read the ancient, uh, you know, Mesopotamian uh, uh, translations for the place, because it's been there a long time, uh, uh, it, they translate it quite differently. Uh, they say that it is the place that the gods go up to heaven in their ships upon. That's how they translate it. Right, because back in those days, gods couldn't fly themselves. Uh, they couldn't uh, lightning bolt themselves down like uh, old uh, Liam Neeson. You know, can't do like that. Uh, they needed ships to get around and fly up in the air and get into space and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, that's what uh, Jerusalem was. It's, from their point of view, it was a launching pad. It's interesting that today we translate it as the place that God gets thrown up. Don't you think? It is very interesting, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, John, I you got a anything to say to the folks? Thing. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, I want I want to say something to you uh, before I say something to the folks. Yeah. Uh, so, what I wanted to kind of get a grasp on, because uh, I think this this uh, little primer that you gave in the beginning here is pretty good uh, as to you know where does the Bible come from, mm. and. Uh, you know, I, I need to do some more research on that because it didn't seem like we got any like where the Bible came from. We're going to jump right into it next week with the we Bible are. itself. Yeah. So um, where, where what would you suggest I go in and, and look up so I can get a little bit more abreast of what's happening? All right. Well, it depends on what part of it. Uh, I don't want to uh, focus uh, on the Anunnaki stuff. Uh, I want to focus on the Bible, the modern Bible we have and how we got it uh, in this. We could talk about Anunnaki uh, stories and comparing them. Well, we could certainly have a, a show for that. Uh, so what I would suggest is go and uh, uh, you know study a little bit about who was Josephus. Uh, study a little bit about who was Paul, you know, Saul, the uh, Roman bureaucrat. And uh, you can study on the Sept uh, Septuagint, how it was written, uh, the Council of Nicaea. Those things like that will give you an understanding of how the current Bible came to be. Because uh, that's what I, I, I kind of want to focus on the series is how did we get the book? How did it come to be in where it is today? And of course, we'll have to do a show on uh, the King James Version and how that came to be as well, which is a very interesting story. Uh, but uh, for right now, I would say Josephus, Paul, and Nicaea. Those three things right there it will give you a good understanding of what we're going to talk about in the next couple of weeks, I think. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Oh, yeah, well, and uh, what I want to say to the people is that you don't want to hear about garbage and you want to like see a really cool book. Yeah. Go and check out the buckler who's funding right now on Indiegogo. <laughs> We're currently at $6,879. We got 135 backers, but we only have nine days left of funding before this thing ends. So uh, the buckler, which is uh, written by me, drawn by me, colored by me, edited by me. I do everything on this book. It's fantastic. And so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and drop this link to that if I can anyway in the in the chat and uh, please go please go check out the buckler it's uh, well worth your time. No, I agree. I backed it. I think you guys should go check it out. Uh, it's a beautiful looking book. John is quite the accomplished uh, little artist over there and he's got himself a new girl so he needs lots of money. Go give the man money. He's got a newborn. Come on. That help. That was good. That was good. Go ahead Thunder. Let's do it. I have nothing to say. <laughs> Holy I am word. I am. I am out of words. Uh, I hope everybody had a good holiday. Uh, most people aren't like me, and I don't want them to be like me. Love this time of year if you can, especially if you have family and kids and stuff. Do it. 
that's precious. It should be a time that you love. Uh, New Year's is coming. I hope everybody out there has a terrible year. Yeah. Because last time I wished everybody a great year, and look what happened. Yeah, so I'm just going. I'm just going to hedge my bets and hope everybody just has just a bad year. Yeah. Maybe I'll be wrong on this one again. I'm I'm counting on me being wrong. Let's do it. <laughs> Break both legs. Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> uh, but uh, I agree. Uh, and uh, this is a fun time of year. Of course, uh, my kids are out, so we don't do much Christmas stuff. But uh, my children are coming back today. Uh, and we're going to be doing some New Year stuff with the grandparents, as we usually do. Uh, we'll have a big old dinner and uh, steak and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm certainly going to be enjoying it. Uh, this should be a normal week for us. Uh, tomorrow we do have comics news today. Uh, we're going to, and there are some interesting comic book stories we can look at. That's going to be cool. Uh, I don't think we're going to have Pontificators for a little while. You guys notice it hasn't been playing uh, over on Arch Channel. Well, he's moving to Texas. He's literally in the in the process of it. So I have a feeling that won't be on for a little while. Uh, but uh, we, of course, also will have the drawn and quartered this week, which we didn't have last week. Uh, so come back and check all that stuff out. Uh, next week we'll do our normal talking about various shenanigans, and then we'll uh, we'll continue uh, talking about uh, Paul. It should be fun. So thank you all very much, and uh, later. <laughs>